All right, let's do an audio test one, two, three. We're going to fire up the VPT PTR Pro Trade Room for our special session today. Thank you for everybody that's here. Appreciate those that know. Thank you for letting me know about picture and sound. We will do a little bit of housekeeping uh, to make everyone familiar with this particular environment. But uh, for the most part, um, what I use is unless I hear a bunch of people tell me, hey, I can't, the picture is super blurry or I can't hear um i'll just know that everything is is okay and if you don't have sound or you can't hear me uh you can put that in the chat people can tell you how to troubleshoot that but essentially there's a, a reset uh icon it's a little recycle icon you can use that to try to reset your bridge you can log out log back in i find that it works best uh on chrome as a chrome browser but you should be able to access it from safari or most mobile browsers as well um, and we're good to go on that. All right. Awesome. Yes. Happy pre, uh, Turkey day Eve. I saw some of the chat going through. Yes. They are, they're partying in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. That was quite an upset. So those of you that are football, soccer fans, whatever, yes, this world cup should, uh, that was a wild way to start it. All right, let's do a couple of quick housekeeping notes before we get started to today. The first is that um, the session is being recorded. All the PTR Pro Trading Room sessions uh, are actually recorded and they're available for members um, or for trial folks that are here on trial and have access to the environment. Uh, you get to the recording by clicking the three lines in the upper left hand uh, corner of the screen and you go to archives recording. So I will be sending out this recording today, but it, um, it is being recorded. And while you're in here, uh, you're welcome. This password will work for the rest of the week. The room is closed tomorrow and Friday, but you can come in anytime and you can right click and save uh, past recordings if you'd like, uh, or you could just watch them directly in a browser. So it's pretty easy and this will be available as soon as the session uh, is over. If you're able, it, um, is this will go about 90 minutes today. If you're able to stay till the very end, that would be great. I will be talking about some of my Black Friday deals. Um, but as long as you watch the recording today, you'll get those codes and everything uh, in case you do have to, to drop off and you're interested in what these, uh, uh, what these specials will be. Uh, I've tried to make them as compelling as I possibly could. Um, and I think they're <laughs> pretty compelling. So stick around for that. If, if you are able, if not, you can watch the recording for that and be sure you're aware because uh, I'm just going to run those literally from today until uh, until Friday. Um, all right. The other thing is that uh, if you have questions, we're just at uh, about a capacity, but that's fine. That's fantastic. I think this is almost the most people we've ever had in here. Uh, we're 192, so it'll be a capacity of 200. Uh, you're welcome to put questions in, in there. Um, I probably won't be answering them in real time. We'll have a Q&A session as well. But if you think of something, you want to put a question in there, the, the best thing to do is to put a question mark at the end of your sentence. That'll highlight it in blue so that I'll be able to, uh, to check it out later. Uh, I may ask you to repeat your question at some point if I don't want to scroll all the way up. So, um, But you're welcome to, uh, to ask questions in there. Uh, we generally don't have any problems with this, but if there's any nonsense in the chat, like spam links or anything like that, um, uh, I just click off and kick you out forever. So please don't do that. Uh, don't drop any links that are in any way, shape or form un not appropriate. You're welcome. It's a completely open environment. You can upload an image. You can uh, chat with other members in here and do whatever you want. I want people to get the most out of today as well as this room in general, but just know that, uh, you know, just be a good corporate citizen while you're in here in a, uh, a combined environment. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I just wanted to start right here on uh, on my website. So this is the Traders Dev Group. And beyond what you're going to see today, I wanted to highlight a couple of things that I, I want to make sure everyone's aware of and gets access to. The first thing is if you click on the members login and I'll drop this, uh, I'll drop this right here. Um, this is where you access the resources that are available now. There'll be more resources in the future. I'll get to that in just a moment. But one thing I want everyone to be aware of is if you click this Get Started for Free, it's going to take you to an area where you can get uh, 
my completely free Futures Fanatic Foundation course. This is not some crappy ebook or something. It literally is 30 videos. It costs me quite a bit of money now in hosting. Thousands and thousands of people have signed up, and I want more thousands of people to sign up. I really do want to uh, help as many people as I can with, with this material. Um, and we'll be covering some of the aspects of this in here today, but just know that this is available. So let me pop this here in. I'm going to put it in an alert, and it's right here. Futures Fanatic course, okay? Um, so make sure that you go and grab that, and that's, again, a great resource on the website. Another resource on the website I wanted to let you know about, I mention this very often because it really helps me out if people use this more, is my help library right here, okay? So this is a very comprehensive help library, not only about uh, things we do here, but stuff like on platforms, like how to import a workspace into NinjaTrader 8, right? Does anyone want to know how to import a workspace into Trader, Ninja Trader 8? It's right there. Now, if if you have a different question and you search the help library and nothing comes back that's relevant, it tells me, and then I can know what people are actually looking for. I want this to be a very comprehensive futures resource for everybody, for the platforms, for the prop firms, for um, for everything. So you can come here and, and get questions answered. And again, of course, this will all be free. Um, it'll also include links to uh, other additional resources that uh, that I offer. So just to know that that's, that's available there as well, okay? And then the final thing is over here on the member login uh, member login area, okay? If you are on a paid trial for $10, 10, $10 for 10 days, um, you will get access to this pro trader room. You don't have access to it if you just came in with the password that I gave you. Um, Again, many of you, if it's your first time here, I don't expect anyone to sign up for my Black Friday deal if it was anything you know, more than 10, 10 bucks or 50 bucks. Maybe some of you will be convinced by just listening to me for 90 minutes today. But if not, you can always sign up for this trial to the room for 10 days for $10 and you'll get access to this environment here. And I'll show you why that's important. Uh, by the way, that doesn't renew or you know, you don't have to cancel it or anything like that. I don't do any of that stuff. There's no upsells. Uh, in the in the funnel, if you will, nothing. I mean, it just it just allows you access, and you get some emails that say, "Hey, if you want to join, this is how you want you, you can join." Um, all right. So in here, I want to point out two resources, and I'm going to drop them in the uh, in the area right here for just for today. And these are the Ninja Trader Futures Fanatic Cheat Sheet and the Trading View Indicators Quick Hit Guide. In other words, this is how you will be able to set up. Uh, your platform, one of those two platforms, and I'll talk about Trade Evade uh, in just a little bit. But these are the primary platforms that we use in here: Ninja Trader, Trading View, and Trade Evade. Okay, uh, we may add some more in the future. I trade on a bunch of other platforms as well. Um, but what we really are going to be focused on is situational fluency, market context, and an awareness of how to read markets very quickly regardless of the platform you're on and you don't have to have my or any other special indicators there are some levels you need to be able to plot and this is how you can do it on these two platforms so let me go ahead and click on this and i will put this in here right now okay and again in the recording of this i will put this up on a page where i put these links available on this page uh, on the page so obviously you don't have to come in here and try to copy copy this craziness down so so don't be too concerned about that again i'm going to post this as an alert All right this is the quick hit cheat sheet guide for ninja trader 8 and it's pretty comprehensive it will go through where to get these indicators if they're available for free if they're not all the details because these are some of the things that i won't be uh, getting into in detail today in terms of the setup right we're just going to talk about how to interpret what you're seeing uh, if you want to know how to set it all up, you're going to be doing that uh, on your own. It's been, in, in terms of setting up, uh, the way I've set this up is that, whoops, is that I'm looking for people to build these themselves, right? So on the Trading View Quick Hit Guide, there are some templates that can be shared, but I've chosen to instead just give you everything that's required for you to build this, um, build this on your own. Okay, because I think that that's more useful to understand the logic associated with it. All right. 
Okay, so we got all that out of the way. Okay, so again, tradersdevgroup.com. If you want to know a little bit more about me or you know what I what I'm up to, this is the page right here. You guys can obviously peruse all this at your leisure, but I won't read this whole thing to you here. But the what I've written here is essentially my mantra what i'm looking to do which is just as much as i can scream it from the from the rooftop i think there's a lot of aspects of trading education that are a little broken um, we're trying to do things a little bit differently here and it's not by looking inward towards rod or what rod's done or what i've accomplished or what my PL is or what my strategies are those are all part of obviously how to relay information and teach and train and educate and create community and all those things but ultimately trading is a skill and any skill has to be developed by the person that's developing that skill. In other words, you do, you have to put in the work and you cannot buy anything that's going to do it for you. Uh, you, you can't, uh, it's really all the analogies that I talk about uh, often in the room around sports and everything. If you're into sports, we're talking about the world cup right now. Um, everyone understands, the ability to see expertise and skill level in sports and how much effort and time it takes to get to those particular levels. And if you're going to hire a coach or someone to help you out, you should have always realistic expectations about what is the capacity for how much you can learn from someone before you actually just have to go out there, get on the pitch, swing the club, do the work. You guys have probably all heard that before, but that's going to be the emphasis of what I'm going to talk about today, which is what I look to do with Traders Dev Group is help traders develop their own situational fluency so that at a certain point, there's no longer, hey, Rod, is this a level? Is that a level? Would you do this? Would you do that? It's always, it depends. And you can go through your own checklist to understand very quickly whether it's a trade for you at that particular time, in that particular market condition, with your particular risk budget, with how you're feeling with that day, with all these kinds of factors that need to be uh, incorporated into how this all works, right? And I know many of you have heard that before and are internalizing some of it, but it seems like still everyone is oriented around, screw that dude, just tell me when to buy this on the moving average pullback or a breakout or what have you, and you know I'll figure it out from there. Um, I'm gonna tell you, it, it really doesn't uh, tend to work like that. Okay, so class is in session. Foundation course is great use of your time. There you go. So it's a, the foundation course. Well, first of all, it's free, so you can't beat that. And uh, it's it's very comprehensive. So it's not only what's a micro and how does margin work and what are commissions and all those kinds of things. And then it gets into some of the strategy stuff as well. All right. <clears throat> so I'm not going to uh, I don't like PowerPoint at all, but I'm going to have to drop to PowerPoint occasionally just so that we can get into some concepts. And then I'll probably actually create slides in front of you today as we go through some of these concepts uh, in, in more detail. But again, obviously, this is who I am. Traders Dev Group is what you're talking about. So you will hear me probably say this. This will be our drinking word today, depending on where you're at in the world. And if you drink, maybe you're already drinking. Or maybe just hydrate every time I say situational fluency, OK? So situational fluency is a term that I think I developed. I might not have. I think I coined it. I I'm, I'm probably didn't, but it feels like my own. And it comes back from when I first started in sales. And I call it sales, but I was a, I was a financial <clears throat> consultant, a broker at Merrill Lynch. And I started uh, way back in 1993. All right. So you can see how long I've been looking at screens and talking markets. So way back in 1993, I was 20. Uh, 24 years old, and it was the market approach to essentially how to, uh, excuse me, the sales approach to how to get people to like you, right? And it's cheesy. You probably heard it. You walk into the guy or woman's office or whatever, and if they have a bass or a fish above their head, you say, oh, do you like to fish? That's not situational fluency. That situational fluency is if you actually know something about fishing, not a lot, but something where you can engage in a conversation. If you don't, don't mention the bass, okay? So it's being situationally fluent. Whatever situation you are in, how do you um, orient yourself very quickly to that? That is what trading really is all about. Markets, you've heard this, but I, 
we're looking to create actual uh, systematic, repeatable, methodical things that you can do in uncertain situations, right? Um, trading gets compared a lot to poker. Uh, why? Because poker is where you're trying to make the best decision you can with elements of luck and chance and variance uh, and incomplete information. So that is what the markets are all about. You can never solve for something that's an incomplete information game. All right, so that's what we're going to be talking about is how do you develop your own situational fluency? And we'll talk about those concepts today. It has to do with risk. It has to do with orienting yourself around um, volatility and volume and a variety of other factors. So here is all that trading is, okay? And it doesn't matter whether you're going to use any of my strategies or really take hold, you know, <laughs> anything that I say today, if it doesn't take hold, that's that's fine. But these two things don't change. High probability entries and risk management. And they're symbiotic because the higher probability that you have of your entry being a quote unquote good level, good entry, okay? And that's a very weighted word, but we'll talk about what good means. I mean, good is, is essentially, is it an actual level? Is it a level that can be back tested? Is a level that in the prior session actually was meaningful? All those kinds of things, because markets are random. So when you're looking for uh, for a ray of of consistency in a very random environment, right? If you're trying to steady that ship and the ocean is going absolutely crazy, you want to be able to lean into the the part of the horizon that's less volatile that's less crazy that you can uh, you can orient yourself around so high probability entries and what i'm going to be looking today is to is to show you how mean reversion as a starting point is a way in which you can measurably know that you have a higher probability entry what is probability it just simply means what is the probability that the market will do what you're looking for it to do at that particular level hold reverse move those kinds of things and then it's risk management. So these are the only two things. So again, whether you <clears throat> gravitate towards anything I say today in terms of the strategies, please try to incorporate that into what you're doing going forward. And this applies to uh, to all forms of speculation. But for the most part, this has to do with day trading. We're going to be day traders here. And we, the reason we day trade the futures markets, there's many reasons. But one is that we have the longest day session that you can have. It's 23 hours. Yes, I know crypto and Forex trade 23 hours a day as well. But if we're just going to compete, compare it to uh, the equity markets, we have um, we can be better risk managers in futures markets, not because they're open longer, but because we, we have more data that we can work with in terms of calibrating the potential volatility and movement for the day. So that's the next thing that's important is just volume and volatility. And we're going to measure volatility in ATR, average true range. Um, we're going to get into that in a lot more detail today. Uh, and I will make an argument again. Some of you have never heard my voice before, and I don't have a lot of authority yet. That's fine. But just let me yell it from the rooftop. If you do not have a trading strategy or if you're not orienting your day trading session around these two things, and I mean both of these two things, um, you're going to struggle. You're definitely going to struggle. Okay. If you're drawing lines all over your charts and you're using fib levels or any any indicator literally any indicator yes a volume histogram is an indicator it's indicating the volume at price <clears throat> and you can say atr is an indicator but it's really just giving you an actual value right it's not lagging any kind of price or anything like that it's technically it's lagging by the period in which you're you're looking at by one one period of that period but don't get into that it doesn't matter too much it's it's very very much real time so we're going to talk about volume and volatility that's what my trading strategies are all about and th these two things will allow you to very very quickly orient yourself around what is happening in the markets and then just uh dovetailing on this concept of risk management thinking risk first okay the answer to almost all the questions that you might have today many questions that you might have today will be it depends on your risk budget. And we're gonna talk about the importance of risk budget. That's where we're really gonna start, okay? So should I, or could I, or can I, or is this a level or these types of things? Well, what is your risk budget? Are you up or are you down on the day? This concept of not trading your PL and and not making decisions based on 
um, how many chips you have left or that kind of, it's just insane. It's like playing a video game where you have three lives and you're moving through and a level and making decisions and you got to a part point in the game where you're not familiar with that that yet and you know you can go kamikaze or whatever because you have two lives left but if you only have one life left you have to make a different decision can i get a one in the chat if anyone plays poker or tournament poker like just just real i mean i'm five or five or ten people you know if you play okay so if you play poker and especially if you understand tournament poker right cash game and tournament poker it's technically the same game it's the same rules right it's, it's not like in a tournament a flush beats uh, a full house or vice versa or anything like that so if you're not familiar with poker at all there's like tournament poker where you pay like a hundred dollars and you get a certain amount of chips and when you're out of chips you're out you can't buy more chips you're out if you didn't make it to the point where you're going to get paid uh you can't rebuy right whereas a cash session you can buy as much as you want trading is tournament poker it's not cash poker okay now for some of you might say hey it's a cash game i got uh i just lost a thousand bucks i got another thousand bucks i got another thousand bucks i got another thousand bucks i'm playing cash poker in the markets no it's tournament especially as a day trader you need to make decisions based on how many chips you have left there are times where you would be folding pocket kings pocket aces i mean it's an extreme example but you where it would be the better decision to fold the most premium hand in all of poker because your chip stack is such that it's going to be worth a heck of a lot more if, if you hold every one of those chips depending on the situation that's happening in the tournament at the time so poker players will will absolutely understand that i'll try to think of some other analogies there are many 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 analogies in life where the answer is always it depends there is no um no standard answer however the hashtag think risk first is the way to always start that checklist okay can i buy developing value area low at five minutes into the session on the nasdaq uh, with a 200 dollars risk budget it depends right let's go through all the various uh, decisions and by the way this won't be uh, uh like a sticky note that you have to have up on your your screen uh this will be intuitive at, at a very quick pace for many of you if you just incorporate a lot of this kind of stuff okay then if we're going to think risk first it's the bunny slopes versus the black diamonds okay and how long can you stay on the bunny slopes you know and continue to hone your skills and get to the point where you there's you just cannot fall down on the bunny slopes right and we're going to refer to that as essentially and but at some point you need to challenge yourself right i'm not saying you stay you trade ridiculously small and stay on the bunny slopes forever of course no <clears throat> you want to be making some progress but in trading so many of you and now with all these prop programs where you know your your skin in the game in terms of actual dollars you're spending for access to the program is so low a lot of people are acting like total bozos they act like total bozos all the time um and they make excuses for why they're why they're acting like total uh total bozos and they're skiing all over the black diamonds before they're they even have the ability to stand up on the on the bunny slopes without falling down all right so the approach here is not how long rod until i can make a hundred dollars a day or five hundred dollars a week or quit my job or all those kinds of things no we're gonna i'm sure you've heard elsewhere that that's not the right way to look at it but i'm going to tell you it's even it's it's absolutely not the right way how many days can you go actively day trading at whatever period of time for whatever um, amount of time that you can you can put into this uh, skill development exercise without losing more than your risk budget can you string together 10 days 20 days a month six months and we'll talk about risk budgets in just a little bit without exceeding your your daily risk budget when you can start to do that the profits and all these other things will take care of themselves <clears throat> many of you have probably heard this and many of you know it's it is all about staying in the game and protecting your actual capital and your emotional capital and the more volatile your PL, the more trades you're doing the more you're jumping from one thing to another the more 
uncertainty you have in general that you're not seeing any kind of progress or you don't know what to measure or you're measuring your progress based on profit and not based on how how often you don't have big red days that's how you stay on the bunny slopes to the point where you just know that while you're on the bunny slopes you won't fall down you get to that point then you can move up in in uh this analogy could go on forever and we could figure out other analogies as well but i think you guys got what i'm getting at there Okay, um, let's go ahead and go through some of these concepts here that we're going to be talking about. So the first thing that I want to mention, yeah, I love tournaments. Okay, so the first thing that I want to mention is our risk budget. So I'm actually just going to, let me just do this. I should have thought a little bit more about how I'm going to do this, but I'll just go with a new slide. There we go. All right, so risk budget. Okay. So what is a risk budget? Okay. So a risk budget is the daily or session max loss you can take. Absorb, handle, whatever, okay? This is important. When people think of day trading, what do they think of? Well, my sense of it is a lot of people think of day trading as scalping or quick quick trading or not holding through some period, right? Which is true. All those things are, are part of the definition. I'm going to find day trading as you and the futures markets have a 23-hour period every single day that you can be trading. You are day trading whatever period of time that you are able to trade. Some of you might be all day traders and give yourself, um, you know, more time to look for different opportunities. And, and you have the ability to uh, to probably accelerate your learning because you're just spending more time. There's no substitution for screen time. Right. It's a muscle. It's a skill. It's a muscle that has to be developed over time. Um, but in that session that the 23 hour day trading session is where we assign a risk budget now again that's whether you trade for 30 minutes of that session or 23 hours of that session you need a daily session max loss risk budget okay now here's how you select that that risk budget what we're going to do is we're going to use the prop programs as a way to start and today we'll probably have time to talk about how you should orient yourself around these online futures uh, prop programs in terms of understanding what amount of risk and uh, what you're really doing, because the problem with these prop programs, and there's a lot of benefits that outweigh the problems, but the problems are Top Step screwed up this business when they started it in 2013 by telling everybody that, that you were trading some account value that's notional. Does everyone know what notional account value means in the futures markets? You know, give me a one in the chat if you know what notional means. Give me a two if you don't. Okay. Notional means the the dollar value of the of the contract, or in the in this case, the notional value of of what they say they're giving you in actual dollars. So if they say fifty thousand, okay, the notional value of an S and P is actually the <clears throat> a, a metric of the value of the entire index. But when they say you have a fifty thousand dollar trading account, you don't have a fifty thousand dollar trading account. You have a trading account that is the size of whatever the max daily risk or whatever their risk is. If, if you can't lose more than a thousand dollars in a day, you don't have a fifty thousand dollar account. You have a thousand dollar account, right? Now, if you start to think of it that way, do you think it would be very prudent or you're you're being a good risk manager if you lose half of your thousand dollar account in one day? Fifty percent. Some of many people are just going, oh. I, I lost $1,000 today, I, but I have a $50,000 account. So that's only 2%. No, it's not. It's 100% of your account. <laughs> so if you're, if you're wondering why you're struggling with these things or you're blowing up and you're like, well, they told me I could trade five S&P contracts in this account. Okay. Well, five full S&P contracts at $50 a point, that's $250 per point. In, in two points, you've lost 
and that's 50% of your actual account value in these programs. So we'll get into some of that a little bit later, but we're, what we're gonna do is use the risk budget. Um, we're gonna use examples from these uh, prop programs and we'll use $50,000 as, as an example, okay? So your risk budget is affected by a, a few things, right? So if we're gonna use the prop programs as an example, and I'll use a 50K account, again, this is silly, but at a firm like uh, Apex Trader Funding, uh, at Apex Trader Funding, this is $2,500, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's $2,500, okay? So if it's a trailing drawdown, which that is, we're not going to get all this stuff. It's not daily. They're, they're not imposing a daily, but you have to impose a daily, okay? Um, it cannot really exceed when you're starting out 10% of a, of a max trailing drawdown, okay? Don't worry about whether these are end of day or, or trailing or whatever. So let's just equal this out. And this is just a starting point. There's going to be some other factors here. Okay. So if you're doing a, a $25,000 uh, $50, or let's call it a $2,500 Apex Trader Funding evaluation, you're talking about 10% is your max trailing draw 10 percent of the max trailing dollar or 250 dollars this would also apply if you applied if you put two, uh, 2500 dollars of your own money in a real live account and you started trading live i would not recommend doing that until don't do that until you can pass one of these programs because as soon as you can pass one of these programs then you can consider doing that or in some instances there is an advantage for a very small amount of people to start with actual real cash if that helps you um uh be, be a better risk manager faster all right so we have 250 dollars there okay if they assign a a daily loss like if the daily loss is 500 dollars at a firm like trade day so that's another firm that we talk about here at a firm like trade day okay this is going to be our rule of a third about 35 percent of that not very good at math. What is it? 165 bucks or something? Let's just say it's 150 bucks, around 150 dollars. Okay. So, and that's also on a fifty thousand dollar account in terms of notional. All right. Now, the other thing is your risk budget cannot exceed. Your best free trading sessions in 20 around that. Okay. Here's what I mean by that. You should be keeping stats. The, the better your stats, the better off you are, whether you need to use a trade journal or whatever, but you should at least obviously know what your daily PL is over the course of a month, a, a full session. Okay. Um, we'll talk more about uh, realistic expectations around these programs you know if you're looking to pass them in five days or ten days good on you if you if you approach it that way you're not really going to have enough data and if you manage to get through you're trading too big and it's just luck anyway so we're going to talk about bunny slopes here but your risk budget cannot exceed your best three trading sessions in 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 20 sessions okay what does that mean that means if after 20 trading sessions about a month for four weeks your best day is 80 bucks like you have, for whatever reason, you don't hold long enough. You don't have good entries. You're too nervous. What? It doesn't matter. You're just looking at the results, right? You're, you had a $105 day, an $80 day, and a $90 day. And the rest were like scratches or 50 bucks. By the way, that's not bad. As long as in there, you had your losing days were within your risk budget. Lost 50, lost 100, lost whatever. Obviously, you want to look for more winning days than than losing days okay we're going to talk about how to do that as we go through the, the thing but on the risk budget you can't exceed that does that make sense do you guys get that give me a one in the chat if that if that makes sense so if you do not have three days that are greater than 150 you have to lower your risk budget i know that will suck okay but it's just simple math and it's also going to preserve your emotional capital because the worst thing that happens to traders is 
just a couple quote unquote bad days. And for us, a bad day is anything that exceeds a risk budget. If you didn't exceed a risk budget, you're doing your job. You push the close button, you got out of the, the, that last trade, you did everything you need to do. If you do that and you follow some of the stuff that I'll be talking about today and then build on it going forward, I'm, t I'm this might sound crazy, but if you are trading a strategy that has the capacity for you to have even two max losing days in a row, it's a bet. It's not a strategy for you. Okay. And I, I, and this is some of the people don't believe this, but like if, if I did what I do in this room at the size and, and, and how small I stay, I, I would never have a losing day. I could never, ever, literally never lose money, but that's because I'm on the bunny slopes and I'm not challenging myself. I'm not suggesting that's what needs to happen. Of course, I lose. I lose quite a bit, <clears throat> but I lose well within my defined risk budget. I have ha not had a max losing day in, I can't even remember, right? Now I have a lot of accounts and I have a lot of stuff going on um, and I could manipulate those numbers a little bit, but when it comes to what's going on in the room, we're gonna talk about how you stay small, stay on the bunny slopes, protect your risk budget and, um, and, and get to a point where you will be comfortable and know that you can never fall down, that you're not gonna lose three days in a row, okay? There's so much focus on these rules from these programs. Are they perfect? No. How, how you would change them if it was your money, I don't know. But you should be able to get to a point where you're not too concerned with the trailing drawdowns and all these other things because you're playing your own game. You got your own risk budget that is defined by starting with 10% of the max trailing drawdown or 35% of a daily loss that they, the firm provides or your risk budget is being informed by how, uh, by, by your profits, right? This is all being recorded, everybody. So everything's being recorded. You can go back to the very beginning. You'll be able to, I'll even show you how you can get some of the previous recordings as well, okay? All right, so your risk budget cannot exceed your best three trading se sessions in 20. And the, the opposite is true as well. If you trade for an entire month and you have had Again, with consistency, not because you traded bigger one day or you added size or all these other kinds of things. We probably won't be getting into all that today. It just needs to be consistent and consistent with um, with the sizing that's appropriate for the instrument, the time of day, and what you're looking to accomplish. We'll get into more of that as we go through the pr uh, presentation. But you cannot exceed your, your best three trading days. But if you did put up some bigger numbers and you have larger uh, profitable days and manageable losing days, then you earn the right to increase your risk, right? Whatever you want to call it, house money, or I can get on this other ski lift if we're going to stay on bunny slopes versus black diamonds. I'm ready to go to the blues. Why do I know I'm ready to go to the blues? Well, because I can clearly handle myself on the bunny slopes, both in terms of not falling down and going faster and faster on these bunny slopes every day. I mean, look, I'm just kicking ass on these bunny slopes. And and I, I I had six days where I exceeded my risk budget by 50 bucks or something like that. Well, now you can take on more risk. All right. Okay. So any questions that I can answer in real time about, about risk budget? Okay. There is no way around this. You have, if you are a day trade, any kind of trading, you have got to have a risk budget. Why? Okay is because every decision we're going to talk about is, is inf informed by your risk budget. Can you take that level? Can you campaign around that price? Can you trade both the NASDAQ and the S&P on the same day? Can you do all these things? It depends on the risk budget. The other thing is that you're a day trader. You have three lives or one live or whatever. Now we're going to a video game analogy, okay? You have to play this video game so that you stay alive to get to the next level. That's all that matters, okay? so. In the video game analogy, while we're in the particular room, right, we're, we're a, you know, a single, what do they call it? Single man shooter or whatever. And we're scoping out the room and we're in that. OK, we're in the trade right now. Everyone's like, where's where's the danger? Where am I going to get shot from? All, all these kinds of things. I get it. That feels a lot like a stop loss. But your stop loss is informed by how many lives you have left. It really is. 
We don't want to be myopic and look at everything on a trade by trade basis. And I risk this to make this. And we'll, as we go through the presentation, I'll talk more about stops um, because they're important. They're, they're a risk management tool. But ultimately, you have one stop every day. Does everyone get this? You have one stop. And that is exit at market, close everything when you are getting anywhere close to this number. It could have happened all in one trade. It could have been a series of paper cuts. It doesn't matter. Okay, but you have got to be able to have the discipline, whatever, you know, all this kind of stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm in my head. I need more. I need more uh, help on my psychology. No, you don't. No, you don't. You, you got to start with more help on your on your entries, your risk management and your trade management, not not your psychology. Now, if you are completely incapable of ever hitting that close button, and you let the PL on your screen just move through, move through. I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a head shrink or anything like that, nor do I think anyone can help you. Day trading may not be for you, and that's fine too. How fast can you just, you know, stop beating your head against the wall? Not everyone can do this because not everyone is capable of, of feeling the amount of pain they need to feel with loss. Many of you might have somewhat gotten comfortable with just trading like a drunk monkey in some of these programs because it's not real, right? Oh, it just cost me a hundred bucks to reset. Or this account just cost me $35 now because Apex is going to give me an account for 80% off forever, which is great, by the way. That's a great deal with data and everything else plus the opportunity. But if you don't treat it like it's an actual $2,500, you got no chance. You might squeak through one of the programs you probably will blow those up and you probably won't take a payout. Okay. All right. So there we go on risk budget. That's uh, that's the important aspect of that. All right. Now let's get into uh, kind of day trading defined. Okay. And I'm going to bring over a market analyzer right here. This is the market analyzer on, um, <clears throat> on uh, Ninja Trader. Okay. If you want this entire market analyzer, the way it looks on NinjaTrader, you can get it by going to the, uh, the room drive in this environment right here, okay? There's a folder, an icon that looks like a folder. Does everyone see that, okay? If you're watching on replay, you won't be able to see this, okay? But there's, a, there's an icon that looks like a folder. If you don't see it, give me a two in the chat if you don't see it. If I don't see any twos, everyone should be able to find it, okay? It's a little folder you click on it. It's called a room drive. And in that room drive, you will see a bunch of different files and stuff in there, okay? The one I want you to, uh, to look for is called primary XML or primary laptop.xml, okay? Bobby didn't see it. It's an icon in the top of the screen in your browser, obviously in the, in the room here, not, you know, it's not in your address bar or anything. Look for primary laptop.xml or primary.xml. And you can import this and get access to it for 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 free. Okay. Uh, more on that later. But again, if you look back at the beginning, I show you how you can uh, look up in the help library how to import anything you want and that will get you this. Now the column I want to talk about today is ATR right here. Seven day ATR. Okay. So if you grab it here, it's going to calculate it for you. You can calculate this on any platform that you like, but we want to use the 23 hour session or the total set it to 24 by five or 23. You want the total session, not extended trading hours, not regular trading hour. You want the instrument trading sessions or something that is capturing the entire uh, session, which is a 23 hour session. So here's what day trading is in the futures markets. It's from 6 PM Eastern standard time. Okay. That's when the markets open most days of the week, including on Sunday night. So they open at Sunday night at 6 PM Eastern standard time. Okay. And they will trade all the way through 5 PM Eastern standard time the following day. And then they're just closed for one hour. Okay. That's 23 hours. We want to be measuring the volatility. Okay. And what is volatility, by the way, gang? What is volatility? No, it's not price action. 
when 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 we say volatility what 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 do you think of yeah range delta change range it's the range so it's the it's the range over time so the atr is the average true range you might have heard this before there's also average daily range and there's you know quite a few people that talk about the atr when it applies to stocks i think that's a little silly because you're only working with a six and a half hour session you know 13 30 minute bars 390 minutes versus we have a lot more time in the futures markets um so the atr is how we're going to measure volatility okay and the way to interpret what you're seeing here is uh, everyone see this number 75 okay so that that that's 75 points okay now just for frame of reference that's come down from about 115 just in the last two and two three weeks it was up at 115 two weeks ago and now it's down to 75 okay so why is that important well it's important for a lot of reasons because what i talk about in the room all the time is if you were to get into a car and you had no sense of speed yourself and it's hard to know how fast you're going in a car but some people can have better feel but let's say you had no feel you could be going a thousand miles an hour or zero you wouldn't really know by how fast things are are moving outside and you have no speedometer probably not a good idea to get on the road especially when there's other traffic and things like that all right now i think you guys all understand that analogy but it's a really important one all right without you understanding what the range is for the whole we're, again we're day traders okay now you might say well if i trade on a 30 minute bar and i only trade for 45 minutes a day why don't i look at what the atr is for that period of time that's kind of cool. You might think of doing that, okay? I don't have a problem with that. At least you're trying to measure your speedometer. But we're going to go top down here, right? And top down, the better thing to do is to, is to look at what is the expected range or volatility for that instrument for an entire 23-hour session. And that's what you're seeing right here, 75, okay? Now, the next thing we can do is talk about opportunity or risk. But let's think of it in terms of risk or opportunity. I don't care. We're just going to do some simple math. What is the, the available amount of money to potentially win or lose on a single MES contract with a 75 ATR? This is probably going to be answered by a... You're not seeing no table to see. Everyone should see what's in the... Everyone should be able to see the market analyzer right now. It's on the screen. I can see it, right? All right. I think we're I think we're okay with that. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to bring up a calculator. Okay. We're gonna bring up a calculator. And again, if you're not familiar with the point values and tick values of the MES. You can get the Futures Fanatic Foundation course and we go through this, but it's $5 a point. So we're going to take 75 times five, okay? And it's 375 bucks, okay? Now, can anyone ever buy the absolute top and sell the absolute bottom or vice versa, you know, or sell the absolute top and buy the absolute bottom? You get what I'm saying, right? Of course not, right? But that is on a dollar value, the amount of dollars that are available for you to scoop up in current volatility. Now, when it's at 100, it jumps up to $500, right? Now, let's compare this to the Dow Jones, the MYM, which is a great starting point, 537 is the ATR. That's 537 points. Go back to our calculator and we'll take 535, 537 times what? Times 0.5, because it's 50 cents a tick, whoops. 537 times 0.5 equals 265. So is the S&P or the MES more volatile than the Dow Jones? Is it, 
yes, the MES is more volatile than the Dow Jones, right? You got that? So we're just measuring it in terms of dollars, okay? And th the reason we're switching it to dollars is because if I just said that the Dow Jones has a 537 ATR and the S&P has a 75 and asked you which one's more volatile, I, I don't know, it'd be difficult, right? But we're measuring it in dollars. Yes, the, the YM is less volatile, right? So we will probably get into this a little bit more today, but if you are just starting out or you are struggling or you're having any kind of issues or it's your first time ever hearing this, okay? I don't offer a lot of advice in the, in the purest sense, but this is going to be the advice. Start with the MYM, literally one contract. Because as you can see, if your risk budget was $200 for the day and you were a one MYM contract trader at a high probability entry point, okay? Your possibility of blowing up or violating your whole risk budget is very, very low, right? If your risk budget's 200 and the entire range for the Dow is 268, in other words, if you sold the absolute lowest tick of the day, got short on the lowest tick of the day and, and covered on the absolute highest tick of the day, okay? If you step, did everything you possibly could do wrong, it would still be very, very difficult for you to exceed your risk budget with that particular sizing without any stops, no, no stops at all, no risk management at all. You're just basically in the markets at the right places. Okay, so there was a question about how it's calculated. It is the seven day period ATR with the instrument set to instrument settings on NinjaTrader, okay? If you were to do this over on TradingView, I'm not gonna do it on TradingView, but you can do it on any platform, okay? On most platforms, what your ATR is going to do is it's going to plot, <clears throat> it's going to plot the price as a graph, as a line, right? And then you just have to see what that is. The thing that's powerful about Ninja is that Ninja has this um, watch list that allows you to pull in calculations. Not only things like you know every watch list can tell you the price and the percentage change from close and the high and the low and the bid and the ask uh, and the volume, but what this can do is actually calculate values like our t-line which i'll get into in, in just a moment is a 233 ema so i can just look here and know that the 233 ema is at 339.75 okay and the price is at at 40.28 we're having a, a, a continuation day today so um we're above this t-line value here but this is the atr is seven day atr and, and these are the measurements right so it's 75 for the mes it's 544 about 540 for the MYM, it's uh, 305 for the for the NASDAQ, and it's and it's um, 42 for the Russell. So let's let's see, is the NASDAQ more or less volatile than the S&P? Well, go to your calculator, take 305 times two equals 610. Remember, we were 375 with the S&P. We were around 270 with the Dow, and we're 610 with the NASDAQ, okay? Now, if you were to um, want to start on this path towards situational fluency, this is where we're starting. Start to orient yourself around risk. What is the range? What is that range in dollars? Because that's what I'm trading at, right? You know. You get what I'm saying. Some of you might be trading in your local currency or convert back to euro. It doesn't matter. We're measuring volatility by a 70 ATR in terms of the dollar. So the NASDAQ is more volatile right now than the S&P. The S&P is more volatile than the Dow Jones. Okay. Now, if you have a hundred dollar risk budget, can you trade the NASDAQ? with a $610 range? I don't think so, right? Just think risk first. If you have a $500 risk budget, yes, you can maybe do it. This is how you orient yourself towards how markets work. Not like, oh, I trade the NASDAQ right now and I have this FIB level and I, you know, I risk eight ticks to, or eight points to try to make 20 points and I, 
all right, great. None of that matter. I don't give two shits about your strategy, dude. Is it informed by your risk budget and the volatility of the instrument? All right. Okay. Do we have any questions about ATR before I move on to that? Because this is going to be the first thing that we look at every day is this ATR and range relative to the ATR. How do I load this? Um, so again, uh, Terry, Jerry, if you go back to the, um, if you, so if you, Jerry, if you just go back to the start of this, um, start of this presentation, I show you over here on my website. You want to go to uh, the website right over here. I'll reinforce this because it's the middle of the presentation now. Go over to this website and go to my help library and just type in something like how to load or upload or type in whatever your question is. It would come back with how you put that workspace into your Ninja Trader. Okay. So this is your friend over here, the, the, the help library over on Traders Dev Group. All right. Okay. Um, so Hector's asking about the Russell. Why do I have to do the Russell? Hey, Hector, you tell me, Hector Cal, tell me what the calculation would be for the Russell. Russell's $5 a point as well. Or someone put in there, what, what, what's five times 40, 43? I mean, you guys can, five times 42, yeah. So 215. So, so right now, the Russell is the least volatile of all the instruments, which is a little wacky because I can never make money on the Russell. And for you guys who are poker players, we talk about the Russell being the pot limit Omaha of, of, of trading, at least what I always say. It's like, it looked good on the flop, but then it all went to shit on the turn and river. But in terms of volatility, it's, it's, it's low. What's crude oil right now on the MCL, right? On the MCL, three, 381 times a dollar, right? 381 bucks. So crude oil is less volatile than the NASDAQ on the MCL, right? So you guys see how you do this exercise, right? Okay, so seven day ATR, you got to know how fast you're going, okay? Everything that I do and everything that I teach and train on and what I highly recommend everybody try to incorporate in is you have got to use ATR. You're trading dynamic markets that change all, all the time. So everything is around ATR. Now, when I refer to ATR, I use the term one ATR or 100% ATR interchangeably, okay? So one ATR on the S&P is one seven-day ATR, the expected range over a 23-hour 23, 23 period, 75, that's one ATR. If we put in a 75-point range for the session, which we haven't, you can see the low so far for the day is 402, and the high is, is, 430, is, is 431. 4031, right? So we have not even put in 50% of the potential ATR. So one ATR would be 75, 100% ATR would be 75. You guys understand that? Okay. So this is where everything starts. We're going to start our day with that. If you trade the NASDAQ, no problem. Do you have the risk budget to trade the NASDAQ? Do you understand what the volatility profile is of the NASDAQ? Okay. Um, if if, if you want to try other things, eventually, by all means, like I said, if you want to um, go to a 14-day ATR, see what the volatility is over a two-week period. If you want to bring it into a four-hour period because you only trade during a certain four-hour period, you want to know the volatility during the first hour of the cash session, you can make all those adjustments. It's very easy. Okay. But what we're doing here is just a quick way that you can orient yourself. And the reason this this the 23 hours is really important is because a lot of the decisions that we're going to make during the morning day trading session are going to be affected by the volatility of the overnight session. What's happened in the Globex? Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to now switch over to our first chart here. It's called the range trader. 
okay? Don't worry about all these indicators and stuff here. I only want you to look at one thing, okay? Now, um, I know the question is, what is this indicator? How do I get it? All that stuff. We're not going to get into that today. Um, it's a, it's an indicator that is available only on a lifetime license, but you don't need it for what we're doing. You can measure it yourself, okay? But what I want to do is highlight this right here and put a arrow around, I mean, excuse me, a circle around it. Can everyone see that? Now I shaded it out, but <laughs> let me remove the shading here. Uh, let's take that down to like 10. All right, can, can you guys read what that says? I'm gonna tell you what it says. It says, yes, the AT, it's a 23 hour session. So the question is, does the ATR start with the Globex session? What we what we have in that market analyzer is I had it, I have it set up to, um, to 24, 24 by seven in Ninja, which basically means all the data whenever that instrument's open. You can also set it to instrument settings and that should work as well, but it's a 24 by seven setting. So it's taking all the available data and that would be from um, the interesting thing about when people talk about the Globex is what is the Globex? Is it the 6 p.m. Eastern Standard open till the cash open? Mm, yeah, that's technically what it is. That's all the overnight Globex until the cash session opens up again. Um, what we're going to talk about is actually moving a half an hour earlier to the 530. Um, but that doesn't affect the ATR. But we look at the 5.30 candle because there's economic news a lot at 8.30 Eastern. When I say 5.30, I'm talking about Pacific time in my time zone. Okay. If you guys can't see that, it says 3.06. 3.06. Okay. That's the amount of contracts traded so far and 29 spot 75 or about 30 points. Let's just put it at 30. Okay. All right. So for this, this session, and the reason I'm holding this today is because uh, this is working out well as expected, right? It's a holiday week. It's the day before, uh, it's the day before Thanksgiving. Um, shouldn't be a whole lot of range and stuff going on. It's a little sleepy. So we can do this training session and we're less likely to experience uh, a typical amount of, of volatility, okay? Now, 30. I'm not very good at math, but is 30... 50% of 75 is 30, 50% of 75. No, it's not. Okay. So today is a perfect example of if you had a rule, it's not my rule. It's just a framework. It's the beginning of situational fluency. Okay. For the trading style that we're going to be talking about. And for this mean reversion trading style, um, you want to know how, how fast and how, what's, what's happening, right? So I use 50% of the 70 ATR is at the time I'm starting trading. Okay. And let's say we're starting right now. Did, have we experienced 50% of the potential range for this session? And remember this session now ends in, uh, in about five hours, right? It ends around four o'clock Eastern. Well, technically it ends at five Eastern, right? But this session ends soon. It ends today. Most of the set, we got a 75% of the sessions already done because the session started last night. So from last night, we've only traded in a 30, 30 point range. Okay. Unless you have 50% ATR. Okay. Unless you have 50% ATR. The mean reversion trading style, which we'll get into in just a moment, which is basically selling highs and buying lows is less probable, less meaningful because we haven't experienced the full potential range for the day. We haven't even gotten close to it. Okay. Now, whether I told you that this was a buy right here or this is a sell up here. Okay. The answer is that value area um, high on the range trader can very often be a short. Okay. However, it's an outside day up, which I'll get to in just a minute, and it's a low volatility day, okay? So my thought process when I'm doing my little check boxes or whatever is, first of all, this isn't even worth trading today. And it's certainly not worth trading the range trader at extreme levels, which I'll get into the setups and signals in a little bit. This, today is not about 
teaching you these two strategies. It's important, okay? It's not about teaching you these two strategies. You want to learn these two strategies? Um, uh, be great if you just have a leap of faith and decide to become a member today, but you can always um, stick around for a trial. And we're here every single day and you'll learn these strategies. But today we're talking about situational fluency and orienting yourself around decisions that you, sh you should be making regardless of, of what your trading style is. But especially if your trading style is around looking for reversals or mean reversion, then we have to know what the volatility is, right? So I think you guys all answered, by the way, that's great. You guys, if any members want to pop up their screenshots or if you see a question that I haven't answered and you know the answer to it, um, if you, um, we have about 80 members in here today, which is great. So members, please, uh, I know that for some of you, this is... <laughs> This is not helpful, right? Because you guys are well beyond a lot of this, but I appreciate you allowing newer people to uh, understand some of these concepts. Okay, so 29, 30 points is not 50% ATR. If I don't have 50% ATR, I essentially don't want to be trading the range trader. You got it? So that right away just allows me to know what what's going on, how fast the car is driving. And when I say I don't, that means I don't. It doesn't mean you don't. It's it's not a rule. It's a framework. It's maybe you actually like driving in a boring, slow car and you are okay with taking lower probability trades because you're just going to size down, right? You're going to go through this filter, this checklist. Oh, I know that this car and, and things, traffic's moving slowly today, but I, you know, I, I'm going to sell this value area high right in front of r1 i'm going to short right here looking for a move back to prior session uh prior sessions high or vpoc no chance it, it's a 50 50 shot it's a which is fine every trade's a 50 50 shot but you can make this better than a 50 50 shot if price was already at 75 points above VPOC or a certain particular level. If it already had put in 100% of its expected range, then the probability of extending beyond that is lower. Capiche, do we got it? Yep, okay, cool. Now let's look at it on the NASDAQ. I won't highlight it. What is the uh, range so far for the session in the NASDAQ? What's the what's the range in point point value? 144, right? So it's 144. Do you guys remember what the ATR was on the Nasdaq? What what what's one ATR on the Nasdaq? No, no, 610 was the was the dollar value of something else. I know this will get a little tricky. All right, we got a lot of guesses. I don't. I think I think one's correct. I believe 305 is correct. Let's look. Whoops, I didn't mean to minimize that. Let me put this chart back up. There we go. Um, yeah, so it is 305. There we go. We got it, 305, okay? So it's making us easy. We're almost 50% ATR on the NASDAQ, but not quite, okay? And... I would imagine that that many of you that are in here today, whether it's your first time ever being in here, you know, you're watching the markets a little bit and stuff, and these concepts are starting to 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 take hold. Most days, by this time, we will see more than 50% ATR range, especially in the Nasdaq. Most days, today is is a quieter day. We know why it's a quieter day. So we are now at almost an hour into the cash trading session, and for the entire period from last night at 6 p.m. Eastern, all the way through to right now at 10.30 Eastern, we still have not put in 50% ATR, okay? Now, can, can you see if you start there and you know how fast the car is going today, you can just even make a decision as to whether it's worth, worth it for you to trade, right? I know this might be overly simplified, but it really is. And on the flip side, if we had a ATR on the Dow of 1,000, or the S&P was up at 125, and that might be too fast for some folks until you get to the absolute best possible 
uh, entries for your particular trading strategy, which I'll get into in just a minute. Okay. All right. So that's it on, on ATR. And I'll, I'll go back to it a, a little bit um, more as we go through the session today, but let's stay on the S and P for our examples. Okay. So we know what the ATR is and we know what the current range is. You can look at this number at any time. Now, if you don't have this indicator, all you have to do is make sure you have the, the session times correct, right? All you got to do is have the session times correct and then just measure. Today, it's making it pretty easy, right? You can just come in here and measure. Uh, take your little ruler and you basically just measure, okay, around 30, right? That's the that's the ATR so far in the uh, in the um in the mes okay all right now let's get into trend okay this is by the way a 30 minute and this is the only time frame i use for day trading on on a on a candlestick bar okay this is the i should say this is the highest time frame that i use other than that we're going to get into uh the stay in your lane in just a little bit okay so it's a 30 minute bar why a 30 minute bar lots of reasons but 30 minute bars are where it kind of all started for TPO time price opportunity and what they were doing when they first started charting in the pits and and 30 minute bars are still used for a lot of algorithms, even in, in the stock market as well. Um, I have no problem if you want to apply a volume profile to a 60 minute or if you want to do some top down analysis. Uh, I won't get into a lot of that today, but I'm here to help you simplify your life, not make more work for yourself. So if you if you are of the belief that you need to come in and look at a daily, weekly, monthly uh four hour eight hour you know two hour in the instrument you're trading or the stock that you're trading whatever every day that just seems like a hell of a lot of work to me when you're a day trader all right and we're going to use the volume profile and orient ourselves around 30 minute bars on the range trader all right so what we're going to do is we're going to apply a 233 ema that's a 233 ema 233 ema that's an exponential moving average to a 30 minute chart. Okay, everyone should know how to do that, right? I don't, if it doesn't matter what charting package you're on, apply a 233 EMA. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to apply a 233 EMA. And that's going to give us this thing called the T line. Okay. So the T line is equals a 233 EMA. Okay. Can you apply it to a five minute? Yes, you can. I mean, obviously you can apply it to whatever you want, um, but it's meant to be a simple trend filter for this 30 minute, all right? Now, what do we do with the T-line? The T-line, all what we do with the T-line is it is the way that we orient ourselves very quickly to trend, okay? This is not a trend trading strategy that we're gonna be talking about here. This is a mean reversion trading strategy for the most part. However, you can trend trade it as well when, when uh when it's appropriate which would be a pullback all the way back to the t-line the t-line would be an entry there at 39.75 i doubt we're, we're going to see 39.75 today okay so the first thing we do is we orient ourselves around what is the volatility how fast is this car going the next thing is what is the what is the trend the biggest challenge that i see with so many traders is they'll say things like why are you shorting or why are you doing this or how do i know today is clearly a trend this you know it's trending okay trending what on what time frame over what period for the last 25 minutes since the open all night okay so what we're using the t-line for is really just so that we can orient ourselves and this is also a learning and teaching tool like i do use a couple other moving averages i haven't even introduced those that much i use a 34 you guys know that on the 534 um, but and I use a couple others. I use a 55 on a higher period, but I don't get into a lot of it here in the in the day trading because it's not necessary and it just overly complicates stuff. And you don't want a bunch of moving averages and things. This chart already has a lot of shit on it, right? There's a lot of stuff already on this chart. Okay, those of you that are in this sort of pure price action camp, which I was in in a long time, you like trade naked. You know, my dad used to say all men are created equal in a very cold pool trade naked if you'd like all right we're um hopefully this is engaging but it, 
uh, I get going and I feel like I don't cover much ground uh, and we're, we only have like a half an hour left. So maybe we'll go a little longer if people are finding it useful. Um, I could definitely uh, talk on this for, for longer, but let me get through these concepts a little quicker. So we got a 233 EMA um, and this is going to establish our trend. Are we in an uptrend or a downtrend? What is the trend right now? Up or down? Up, right? Okay. What is the trend back over here? when we're hugging both ends of this, right? Let, let's say it was yesterday or or, or uh, it was Monday. You could call it range or I call it neutral, okay? Sideways, I call it neutral, all right? So here's what we do when we're orienting ourselves. There's a little checklist in the morning. I just woke up, I'm rubbing my eyes or whatever. Is price for the entire session uh, greater than 50% ATR? Yes or no? Um, if it is, I make certain decisions I think about. By the way, we're not going to get into all the decisions today. This is just situational fluency, framework, market context, a starting point. So is it? Now, is the market in a, a bull or bear continuation pattern? Uh, this is going to be called a bull continuation pattern because all of price action is above the T-line. Okay? I have no problem with you guys experiencing, uh, experimenting with other time frames, other moving averages, whatever. Just make it consistent, back test, and know that it works. Um, members in this room can tell you there's something magical about this this Fib level 233 on this time frame. Why is it magical? Because me and two of my trading partners ran millions and millions and millions and millions of back tests and and found that this was the one that was the one that was going to be anointed as having the most relevance on this 30 minute time frame so that we could quickly just establish um establish what the trend was so it's a bull continuation pattern with low volatility that's the day that we're that's the session the the kind of environment that we're trading okay now let me show you the next really critical important lines that you can get on any charting package okay you need the 23 hour, the whole session, high and low. So 4013 was the high, yesterday's high, and 3945 was yesterday's low. Uh, guys, we'll get into all the stuff about setting up your, your charts near the end. I'll make sure that you guys know how to do it. So you're welcome to keep putting the questions in there, but let's just focus on these concepts for now 233 ema we understand what the atr is now the next thing is the is the prior session high and low okay does everyone understand prior session high and low i don't know on your charting package what what um what indicator you would look for but if we right clicked here and go to indicators and See how this says prior day, high, low, open, high, low. And I take off the open, I take off the close. I don't give a crap about that. I don't care about settlement values and all those kinds of things. Nothing wrong with them if they help you and they're informative and you've used them yourself and, or you've worked with someone who can show you how they add value, no problem. If you wanna know where the open was, you wanna know where the settlement price was, I got no problem. All I care about for what we're doing here is over the last 23 hour session, are we in an uptrend or a downtrend or neutral? What is the amount of volatility as measured by a seven day ATR? And what was the high and low of the prior session? You know why? Because all price action is random. The lower the time frame, the more random the time. But in a 23 hour session, I have no idea. No one in the entire world knows why price stopped at 4013 yesterday or made a low of 39.45. And that's truth. No one knows. No order flow, no resting orders at that level, no, you know, Goldman pulled the rug. That's all bullshit. That narrative stuff is all bullshit. It's all random. It becomes less random the higher the time frame. 23 hours is not a bad amount of time. So this right here at 39.45 was yesterday's low. This is yesterday's high. Does so everyone agree on that? Okay, a thousand out of a thousand dentists agree. Okay, a thousand out of a thousand dentists agree, right? Yes, we all agree, right? Okay, got it? The 23 hour high and low. So now we're gonna add one more thing to our situationally fluent, rapid, quick hit 
can orient myself towards what's going on in literally 30 seconds. Okay, you can do this checklist in 30 seconds. We're gonna add more layers to it, but this is 30 seconds. What is my volatility? What is my trend? Am I trading inside or outside of the prior session? Okay, so this will be advanced. Don't answer it if you're a member or, or someone on trial. I'd, I'd like the concept if you li literally, if your first day in here, first day ever hearing my voice, are we, this is the prior session high at 40.13. We're currently trading at 40.31. Are we trading inside or outside of the prior session's range? What's the answer? Are we trading inside or outside? Outside, cool. Outside, right. We're outside. So now we're going to put all of this together. We are in a bull continuation pattern outside day up. Okay. MES is low vol. Okay. Bull continuation outside up. Okay, I know everyone wants to know, okay, well, what does that all mean? How I put it all together? We're going to get to some of that, but the most important thing is just, can we do this? Now let's just do it instantly on the Dow Jones. Someone tell me, what is the Dow Jones right now? You don't have to write all that out. You can just, is it the same as the S&P? Same or different? Same. It's a bull continuation pattern outside day up low vol day right what's the russell same thing let's look at let's look at like crude oil what's crude oil bear continuation pattern outside day down right And uh, I mean, I don't know. Does this look does this look significant? I mean, maybe we just got lucky that that uh, that T line kind of held right there as our as our sell point, right? Kind of held right here as well, right? So crude oil is in a bear continuation pattern outside day down. Okay, five hundred and thirteen. Excuse me, five hundred five. 513 $5 is more than the ATR, right? This is 100 more than 100% ATR. Remember? What's our ATR on on the Nasdaq on uh, excuse me on crude oil? 381. So crude oil lots of volatility recently, right? We we saw some the other day as well. Bear continuation pattern outside day down. Okay. All right. So on the range trader, we have established volatility, trend, and range relative to prior sessions range. Okay. We have both the volatility for the session and where we're trading relative to yesterday's yesterday's range. Okay. Now we won't get into all this today, but all we do is simply overlay a number of very easy concepts to this. And those concepts are, should I be trading in a low volatility range? Depends, depends on, on like we discussed, uh, your particular uh, situation, your risk budget, your skill level, all those other kinds of, all those other kinds of things. Time of day, factors like that. I would, for the most part, not be trading on a Wednesday like this nor will I trade on Friday. The room is closed on Friday. The, mar the, the markets are open a little while on these holiday weeks, but for the most part, it's not a great day to be trading based on uh, range and things like that, okay? So that's the general concepts behind this. The next thing we're gonna add, and this is covered a little bit more detail, is just VPOC, okay? VPOC stands for volume point of control. The reason I add VPOC is because this is a volume histogram, it's not a a TPO chart. TPO is going to account for um, <clears throat> price over time. This is price. This is price at volume. Okay, volume at price. So they'll look similar, but it's a little bit different. I won't go into how to interpret all these things, but uh, give me a one in the chat if you're familiar with the point of control or the concept of it. Give me a two if you're not. 
Give me a one if you know what the point of control is. Give me a two if you're, if you're not. Okay, so mostly ones. I'll answer. So it's good that your guys are oriented towards that. But VPOC is simply the price at which the most amount of volume took place uh, uh, for the session. Okay. VPOC can move around. It can shift. We call it a VPOC shift. We won't get into that today. Okay. VPOC for the current session on the range trader is sometimes a target, sometimes an entry but always a level. So VPOC on the current, uh, in, in the uh, current uh, setup for today is almost meaningless. Why? Because it's an outside day up. Slow, slow volatility day, outside day up. This is a double distribution pattern with VPOC right here. Okay. It's just a meaningless level. You could use it as a target if you decided to, you know, dance between the raindrops and get short here. You just look at it as a little scalping target, no problem. Obviously, if if they're if sellers are able to get us back into this little air pocket from this move here, you could look for a move back down to there. Do I know or have any opinions or thoughts about whether we'll reverse today or do anything or sit here? Absolutely not. I've no it's completely random. Okay. What I do know is that there's a another 45 points sitting there in one direction or another, possibly. Okay. All right, so today VPOC on an outside day up with a narrow narrow range is just not that interesting. You can almost like say, I'm going to filter out that level. <clears throat> That's developing situational fluency. Why is it not as interesting today? Because let's go through the checklist. Again, I'm going to reinforce these same concepts. Low volatility environment, outside the prior range, holiday, slow day, whatever you want to say, not that important. However, prior sessions VPOC, is very, very important almost all the time because I'm now going to introduce the next concept, which we want to talk about the rule of projection. Okay, we're going to talk about the rule of projection and uh, we'll go right here. Rule of projection. So make this a little bit bigger. All right. Lots of people like to draw fib lines, you know, 127 extension and, you know, but they're anchoring it from where? From a made up level. I know you can say it's made up. There's some times where it just screams like clearly this is a swing higher, a swing low, and clearly I should anchor my fib level from there. Or they want to do a measured move projection. You know, this was the last thing, this measured move. Nonsense. Bullshit not not testable you can't back test it the 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 fact that fib is as popular as it still is just blows my mind it blows my mind so the rule of projection is going to use the same the two concepts that we talked about earlier all that matters is volatility and volume so what we're going to do is we're going to take one atr we're going to come back to this over here what we're looking to do right now, gang, is, is project the potential ranges for today based on prior sessions of uh, VPOC. Okay, so the first thing that we need is we need to grab our ATR. Remember, ATR is everything. The ATR on the MES is 75. Okay, we're going to come over here to our prior sessions VPOC. Okay, and we're going to take 75 from and add it to 3985, uh, and that's gonna give us, I'm really bad at math, but isn't that 4060, all right? So we're gonna grab our ruler, we're gonna drop it here, 4060, there you go. That is our rule of projection high for the day, okay? Does it always work out that we get a, a high volume node that's kind of in the middle of the prior session? No. There are other times where we can measure this a little differently, where we are situational, right? Where we adapt to what we're seeing. Yesterday, this is a nice, decent looking profile to, to key off of. And where would the price be to the downside? What would the price of the MES be to the downside? Yeah, 39.10, right? 
39.10. So we're gonna go we're gonna go down to the downside. Okay. I saw something about works or whatever. I love that all of this is just probabilities. We're just we're just using probabilities and we're using dynamic factors to give us some probabilities. You know, if a meteor hit the earth or the president was assassinated or whatever, is 39.10 gonna hold? Of course not. You know, if they I don't know, they saw cancer or Powell came out and said, I'm never raising rates again. Is 4060 going to hold to the upside? No. Right? But we're using the information that we have at hand. Okay. Now let's connect a few other things here. Does everyone anyone have any questions on the rule of projection? You guys should be able to do it on any instrument. You're going to take the prior sessions VPOC. Okay. Yes, I don't get hung up on if you don't have this indicator, you don't where the, know where the VPOC is or, or, or whatever. We just want to work with what we've got in front of us, right? You can get a volume histogram on, on any chart. On TradingView, you can get it for free, right? Okay, so it sounds like there's no questions on that. So that's the rule of projection. We're going to take... Uh, one ATR from prior session epoch. One ATR from prior session epoch gives us a gives us a range. The other thing I wanted to just point out is, you see how there's these. This is prior session low thirty nine forty five. We went through that before. Uh, the low from the prior session was 39.40, and the low from the prior session was 39.42. Now, I don't know about you, but I didn't have to draw these lines as support and resistance or whatever. This is the last three sessions where the market is telling you this is support for right now. I should make that up like that. There, there it is. So what we would call this is we would call this a, a bid zone. Okay, support or bid zone. Now, if there's uh, some of you that are struggling with over trading or looking for trades or signal hunting or all these other kinds of things, the other thing about range trading off of this is if you really became disciplined, right? And there's no problem with, with this is not like poker where if you only play pocket aces, your opponents will adjust to you. The market doesn't care if you have the patience to wait for the highest probability setups. If you only want to play pocket aces, just play pocket aces. Now you got to get dealt a lot of hands before you're going to get pocket aces. But if you have the patience for that, this is where you'd look to be long. And later on next year, this community is going to get into um, option selling where we would be selling puts there which has all kinds of other benefits because we're getting paid a premium for the volatility that we're uh, for the, for, for some of the risks that we're taking. And we have even more of a fudge factor if you understand uh, options. So will we get down to 39.42 today? Pretty unlikely given current price action and the day that it is, but that's your level down there. And that is because it's back to back to back prior sessions lows, right? Does everyone kind of get that there? All right. So this is the range trader. The range trader is complementary with the next thing that I'm going to show you, which is called stay in your lane. And on stay in your lane, we do not want to get too hung up on these bar types for right now. Okay. This is a whole nother thing. I teach on these bar types in the Futures Fan Fanatic Foundation course, but they're really not as important in terms of the visual price patterns that the bars are forming. What we care about is these vol bands okay this is a vwap indicator again the documents that i put in the very beginning of the session will show you how to get this indicator uh for free it's called trade context um or you if you have a lifetime li license to ninja trader you can get this and you can get it on trading view uh for free as well there's a bunch of free indicators that will give you this this green line here is VWAP. This is two standard deviations above. This is two standard deviations below. 
this is our bid zone. Okay. And this is our offer zone up here. F12 is the offer zone. Okay. Bid zone and offer zone. All right. This is going to be the most simplified version of this I could possibly ever give you, which is this is where you sell and this is where you buy. Now, might someone tell me why the offer zone today, I might either be not interested in it at all, not trading at all, or why today the probability of the offer zone being a quote unquote good sell is less. Why is it less of a prob probability of looking to short today in this offer zone? Correct. You guys got it all. It's outside day. It's an outside day up on our range trader. It's a low volatility day. Another concept that we've begun to introduce is just looking at the slope. Okay. Can you see this slope of this line? When the slope of the line is sloping upwards and you don't have to measure it. It's just an eyeball. It doesn't matter if it's a 10, 20, 30% slope, you know, this slope, when it's like that, it's just not a visual good air quotes look for looking to short here. Now, all that being said, this short worked out, this short worked out. So we sell the red line and we cover at the next line or the next line from there. This is our no-go zone. We don't trade in here, okay? And then here's our bid zone. So if I were to, to what I would say pepper the book, it would be that, okay? Now let's say I get a fill at 40, 37, 50. What do I do if it starts going against me? It depends, <laughs> right? Now, here is, if it starts going against me, I'm cutting into my risk budget. I've done no trades for the day. I have a $250 risk budget, let's say. I've had no trades for the day, and every point it goes against me is five bucks, okay? If you want to have stops, absolutely have stops in the market, but make them dynamic. I suggest that they're always at least 25% ATR. What's a 25% ATR stop on the MES right now? This will be a little bit more advanced. Let's say I was going to use a 25% stop on every trade on the MES, even at a high probability entry like plus twos, but it's a day in which there's slope and a low narrow overnight range. I throw, I'm throwing a lot at you guys. I, I get it, but yeah, about 19. So 19 is 25% of 75. Is that right? Okay. And what? Let's let's round it to 20. Rod, did you just tell me to trade the S&P with a 20 point stop? Are you crazy? Nope. Now you could call that catastrophic stop. You could call it, you know, dynamic stop. So you have a stop in the marketplace, but I don't care. And you should not care either about where your stop or risk management is relative to your target because it's random. If you're going to sell at 40, uh, 40, 37 half and your target is 40, 27, that's a 10 point target. And you're taking 19 points of risk. Everybody in the world would teach you that that's not going to work. But it absolutely could work. Why? Because your entry is a high probability turning point. Now, it's not a high probability turning point today. It's a lower probability turning point. Does everyone get that? But there will be days in which we have a really expansive range. And the S&P has a flat plus two up here. We call this plus two. Okay. This is plus two, plus one, VWAP, minus one, minus two. Okay. But either way, if you're going to use a 19 point stop, that's fine. And then at 19 points, you've now lost $95. You've cut into 40% of your risk budget for the day. Your next trade and everything you do is informed by what happened on that prior trade. Okay. You, you either cannot take trades now anymore, or you would even have to tighten your risk on, on high probability entries. Everything has to do with thinking risk first, not in a little myopic box, right? Because what we want to do here is take advantage of the humanness of who we are, because it's a major disadvantage for everybody else. Most people don't have the skills to code. 
if they did, they don't have the ideas of what should be coded. And so if they tell someone else to code <coughs> something, all the beauty of a, of a, of a, a computer or an algorithm or something just trading for you all sounds great, but you don't really have the situational fluency, the awareness of what you want to program anyway. And you cannot program in at our budgets and our skill levels, all the various factors that your brain can do a lot faster. Yes, you can tell a computer that it's a, you could measure the slope, you could put in all these other factors, but you could do it so much faster yourself. All right, so there we go on this, the, the stay in your lane. I mean, let's do it on the, on the Dow because the Dow looks a little, little better today, kind of flat. Okay, about almost 80% of price action is going to, during the cash session, cash session, let me type this in here, cash session, 80% of price will stay within 2SD. Now, I don't know about you, but those odds seem pretty good. That's called probability trading. That's called, okay, 80% of price will stay within two standard deviations. So even when it gets out, it doesn't, and this is a very low volatility day, you know, very low top, uh, low volatility day, okay? So if I'm peppering the book, in other words, placing orders at various prices, same thing here. Order submitted. Order submitted. Those are my, those are my levels there. Now, what I'm always doing is I'm taking a look at what are these levels relative to the range trader as well. Do they have any significance in the range trader? Well, I like this 30, when I say I like, every time I use the word like, it just means it's a level. There's confluence. 34074 that I placed over on this chart, minus twos, the bottom of the bid zone, is basically right around the Globex lows. And the 252s up here is just about session highs, pretty close. Guys, you guys see that? And if I get short here at 252, a target can be 207 or 162. And if I get short here, I, I'm only managing risk. We're not going to have an opportunity to actually trade today to, to show like the markets are just not moving. So we just watch paint dry to try to get examples. But there are more concepts than we'll go into today in terms of risk risk management strategies and trade management techniques. One is called a graceful exit, which simply means if, if I'm in a position that immediately and profoundly goes against me, I'm short and the market goes a lot higher. What I'm looking to do is, is try to scratch that trade or uh, take a less of a loss on it as quickly as possible. There's some nuance to that. But there also is, do I have another natural level with which I can add or campaign around that price? In the cases today in the S&P, and the Dow and everything on an outside day up, the answer is no. Okay, if you add to um, to a unprofitable position on a short on thirty four two fifty one, you are doing the absolute no no of what they always say. You are adding to a loser. It's very different than if we had already a, a another level up here, or if developing value or high was higher. R one is not a level. I won't get into that today. Right? This it's just a pivot point. So. R1 is not an area that you can short. All you can do with a 34,252 short in the Dow Jones is take a profit on it or scratch it or close it out for a loss. There's no campaigning or adding. I don't have another trade up Order here permitted. or something like that. Order canceled. Okay. All right. So that is stay in your lane. Let me see the other quick concepts that I want to go through. Um, on trading view, let me go over to trading view right here. Okay, I'm going to pop this in here. If you're not following me on trading view, follow me on trading view. I will eventually be posting more ideas and scripts over there. But one of the things I want to show you is that <coughs> we do have for trading view and for ninja trader a couple custom indicators that i won't get into today one of them is called the extreme turn okay it's the it's kind of the only custom indicator i teach and train on this a lot on this on this page 
and you can figure out how to do most of that calculation whether you own that uh, indicator or uh, indicator or not but the extreme turn is a really nice uh, turning point indicator that we apply to mostly 30 minute charts although you can apply it to higher time frames as well but over here on um on trading view let me go to uh charts okay here is the, the stay in your lane and the range trader on TradingView. Okay, it's the same thing. So here, most days your levels will be exactly the same. Here we are on the MNQ, let's look at the MES. Okay, you see how this level says 40, 36, 75, that's our plus twos top of the, of the offer zone and you can see how we have this slope here. It looks even more pronounced on a five minute bar. Guys, everyone see that slope? So 4036 and 4037. It's the same level right here. Okay. So you can trade it on, on either one. And yes, you can apply these bands to uh, trade of eight if you have if you're charting on trade of eight as well. Okay. We're straight up at eight o'clock. So what I'm going to do is switch to kind of question modes. And there was enough questions that came in that what I would ask is, let's just ask them again. So let's open it up, maybe do 15, 20 minutes of, uh, of questions. I know we covered uh, quite a bit of ground. Um, if the questions are around how to build these templates and charts and stuff out, Please look at the alerts. There is a there is um, Google Docs that you can grab that will answer most of the questions around getting your charts oriented around what we talked about today. But really want to emphasize the importance of volatility and volume and prior session to determine current session. All right, so let's see. How can you, uh, by the way, gang, if you guys can put question marks at the end of your question, then that's really helpful. Ray, yes, absolutely. So the question is, <clears throat> do these concepts work on, so with instruments other than the stock indices, gold and crude oil, I do everything on the range trader. So I don't, so here's, here's the range trader on, the treasury markets. So the ZN today is a neutral outside day up. But yes, absolutely. You can apply it to any instrument as long as you use a 30 minute time frame and the same indicators for the volume profile session highs and lows. Uh, good question. So the question is, understand how the rule of projection is calculated. By the way, the way it is calculated is it's one ATR, 100% ATR from the prior session's VPOC. Um, what you do with it is just determine how fast the car is moving. So let me give you an example. If the market fell apart today and came down here to prior session's low, which is absolutely a buy because it has uh, SOS2, SOS3, it said three days in a row. 39.43 was uh, where some responsive sell buyers came in and we break below that. We have other ways of calculating where where price might go to. But in that case, you could use it as an ad that would be an available ad to you. Now, again, whether you're stopped out before you get there or not depends on your risk budget and a variety of other factors, as we talked about today. So great question. So you're basically using it as just the, the potential range. It does become a level, though. OK. So as an example, if you got long today and you were looking for the market to, and when I say looking for, please don't get into, I think this is going to happen or all those kinds of things. We have to use words to express whatever. Get a lot of that out of your head. Oh, you know, it's a uh, slow and, you know, don't sell a slow market and, you know, seasonality and, you know, we don't know it's random and, and it, it could sit here. It could do nothing. It could fall 20 points. It could go up 50 points. We have no idea. Okay. But if you were long and were outside day up and making new recent highs and you have nothing else to key off of, 
don't look this is this is this is important don't go signal level hunting or draw a fib level on some or do some rule of projection or whatever the much higher probability target if you're looking for an extended target would be that rule of projection high for today if you're long another 20 points from here does that make sense control you got you got that so you could use it as a potential add to an unprofitable position getting long here at 39.42. Or better for today, you would use it as your ultimate target. You know, if you don't want to squeeze any more blood from a stone, that's about where we look to be going given the current volatility environment up to about 40.57. Okay, cool. Uh, <clears throat> so Brown is asking, why did you say we shouldn't trade in the one standard deviation range? Um, uh, I don't know if I sh probably shouldn't have said you shouldn't. Absolutely, this you can. These are fine too. Order submitted. I would I I would not be shorting. Uh, so the minus ones are tradable depending on market conditions. Today is not a market condition in which you'd want to be uh, doing much with the minus ones because the volatility is just too low. Nor do you want to switch and say, well, now I'm going to trend trade off of one standard deviation from VWAP looking for, you know, this to this. But you could at some point. There are days in here where I'm positioned in such a way where I will do that. You don't want to have style drift. You're still working off a, a dynamic level. I mean, no, nothing on here is a moving average, right? But... When you're learning this strategy, by the way, I'm just going to uh, cancel all these orders. When you're when you're learning this particular strategy, you want to start with the higher probability entries as you're learning. Because trust me, everyone in here and other members will go, the most frustrating thing while you're learning a lot of this and developing how you're going to orient yourself around it is days in which the levels don't hold and you're immediately kind of fighting a short on a strong up day or you're buying into continued selling and Rod said that 80% of price action is supposed to take place within these two levels. But I always happen to be stopped out when it's outside, you know, and I get it. So what you want to be able to do is quickly orient yourself on, on the days in which uh, minus ones are tradable and the days in which they're not advised. And if I did say the, don't trade in the middle of the muck, that's everywhere in here, everywhere in here. You do not want to be trading when you're starting, when you're learning this thing, right? This is what we call the middle of the muck, all this here, okay? VWAP is, is nine times out of 10 a target, not an entry, it's a target. It's a target for shorts if you're short here, targeting 40.20. If you get long, long at 4,000-ish, at 4, you would target 40.20 as your, as your target. Does that make sense? All right, uh, let's keep them coming. More questions? All right, you got that? It's, those are great questions because that's where we started the whole, if you weren't here the whole session or if you watch this replay, it all starts with situational fluency in your risk budget, right? All starts with situational fluency in your risk budget. And situational fluency is, what is the, how fast is the car going? Which direction is the car going? Okay, where could the car potentially go today? based on dynamic factors that you can quickly measure. There is no discretion for the most part. There can be in other situations, depending on where the volume profile is for the prior session. But when you want to start with the absolute letter of the law, you take the prior session's VPOC and you measure one seven day ATR above and below it. And that's going to give you a range to work off of for the day. It's repeatable, it's mechanical, it's dynamic, it's systematic, it's everything that you want. And then it will inform the decisions that you want to make from there. All right. Um, so Daniel's saying that you said that price stays inside 80% of the time, but it's moving upward or downward. Yeah, it's mo it's moving all within that, uh, all within that range. Um, but and of course, you can lose money. But if when you say took a position earlier, let's take a look at a filter that we can ease quickly apply. Let me close these two. Order 
Okay. <laughs> the Dow Jones is the least volatile. The Instwell, it turns out the Russell's a little le less volatile, but the Dow Jones is less volatile than the NASDAQ and the S&P. Great place to start, 50 cents a tick. Good way to, um, to practice this while controlling your risk budget and not having an oh shit moment because you know you're trading too big and the contract's moving against you so if we're doing something like this um the plus twos two standard deviations is 34 250 so the question was it's going up and down but what if you were long or short from earlier you don't you're not supposed to be long or short from earlier when i say supposed to orient yourself around the highest probability entries right here Order submitted. and right here Order submitted. okay let me go ahead and actually log into, um, I don't know, like these Bolinox ones, okay? So I can, all right, so I have a, all right. So, um, <clears throat> by the way, um, you don't have to take my word for it. In just a little bit, I'm going to ask members of the room who were trading while I was talking this whole time, how they did today. I don't think anyone would have lost money. Probably everyone is a small G zero. We'll talk about this in just a second, but um, these are all just from one firm called Bullinox and some of them are past and all of them are uh, profitable or whatever. So anyway, I'm not gonna convince you that, that this stuff works today, but it works. And if you, uh, if you implement this stuff and you stay small. So if I said 78% of price action is taking place within these two standard deviations, and you are only involved at the outskirts of the two standard deviations, you have, do you have an 80% probability of winning? No, uh -uh, that's not what I'm saying. But you have a higher probability that that's a good entry that you can manage, uh, manage accordingly. Now, if you're long or short from in here, I, I got no love for you. There's nothing you can do with this particular trading strategy. Right? Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully. Uh, so we answer that. What do you mean by campaigning around price? Really good question. So we're probably not going to get into that today, but ultimately, um, especially if you're staying small and you have your initial entry is high probability, it just means actually adding, adding, adding and, and taking off contracts, some profitably, some unprofitably. You can campaign around an unprofitable position to get back to break even. Um, or you can campaign around a profitable position to keep inventory on for bigger moves. So what campaigning around price mean, uh, uh, I should really call it campaigning around levels, but in this case, it's a price. And that would be, the, uh, as an example, if I got short again here at 251, uh, 252, I don't have any ability to do an ad or campaign around a losing position. All I can do is take it off a loss or scratch it if it comes back in. And the reason for that, I'll get into more later. There's no levels to work off of. I mean, you could technically sell, say you're going to sell high of day. So you sell that, you sell, sell, sell high of day. Even if I'm in two, that's a dollar a point. It's very manageable on a low risk day. So hopefully that answers that. Um, may I post a link for a volume profile indicator with... Uh, yeah, you can, McTrade, if, if, um, if it's free and if it works, <laughs> uh, gang on the volume profile stuff, the, there's one available from Ninja for about 150 bucks. Uh, Ninja will cost you a thousand to have the volume profile here and volume profile is free uh, on TradingView. It's free, so you can get it over there. Um, but thank you for asking. The, uh, the VWAP bands, these are the ones that are, are part of the lifetime license of Ninja. But you want to look for in the in the market uh, in the room drive. Look for something called trade con context. Trade context. These are our friends over at uh, Take Profit Trader. They have a free indicator that you can use that will get close to that. Um, yeah, it's free on Tradeavate as well. Good. If it seems to be accurate, yeah. I'm not r super religious about you know opening opening value area and all this kind of stuff. I, I care about is it is it properly measuring the VPOC or, or pretty close? And is it giving us a volume profile that at least we can interpret? All right, uh, I'll answer a few more questions and I'll just tell you what the Black Friday thing is for those that are interested. Uh, campaigning around price. I imported your market analyzer, but get error when trying to load it. Can you tell me what the 
Um, well, you, you you might get some errors. Did you you got to be connected to uh, you got to be connected to data, and you might need to make sure you're connected to real time data through a prop firm or your own live thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I can show them real quick. So here's the S and P seventy five, Dow Jones. Uh, MYM is 537, MNQ is 305, and the Russell is 4250. All right. Okay, now before I answer any more questions for members or anybody else, let's do our little thing. Can you put your PL and PL and EC scores in here? And let me explain what that means. Okay, so a uh, a small G means that 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 trader was profitable within their risk budget. So if they had a two hundred fifty dollar risk budget, they made somewhere between zero and two hundred fifty dollars. If they have a big G, then they exceeded their risk budget. They made two hundred fifty one dollars or three hundred dollars. Okay, the same works on the downside. If you have a small R, that means that you lost within your acceptable risk budget. You have a $250 risk budget, you lost 80 bucks. You have a small R. What is not permissible is a big R. A big R is you have a $250 risk budget and you lost $251. No. No. Let me say it once again. No. Okay. Now, will there be days and market conditions and sessions that will definitely lend themselves more towards getting closer to your max risk budget? Absolutely. With this trading style or any trading style. Okay. And JOMO is, is means the joy of missing out. So some a lot of traders might not have been trading today because they were just listening to this training session. But um, and then the, the zero refers to an EC score, an emotional capital score of zero to 10. 10 being bad, zero being the best. How do we measure that? Okay, that's definitely a field discretionary thing. If you uh, trade and very often you feel like every trade goes against you and you have a yo-yo P&L or you're blowing up these prop programs, uh, you know, you're getting close to the trailing drawdown or you're fighting with the firm over this, that, and the other because you think they did you wrong because you lost connection for five minutes and you lost this amount of money on a trade and all this kind of stuff. That's a higher emotional capital score. Don't do that to yourself. This does not, trading does not need to be any of those things. Okay. If you are able to come, come back here on an extended trial or as a member, you will find that every single day, the vast majority of our traders are green. And I, I think that's a fair statement, every single day. And when they're not, the, the amount of times that we have big R's is diminishing dramatically. I don't take all the credit for that. All I'll give the credit to the traders that are in here le hearing me chastise them every day in which they're, they're not doing that. Okay, because what this room is going to be about is just me helping traders develop the faith that this is possible. Okay. The faith that it's possible. And what does possible mean? Possible just means that this does work. This, very vague. Does, very vague. Work, very vague. But you guys get what I'm getting at. Okay. We also have members that don't do anything I do. They do draw trend lines. They do do other things. Okay. They, they apologize sometimes when they post in our Discord channel about things they're doing, which they don't need to do when they post slow, steady, consistent, non-losing days trading the right contracts for the amount of skill and risk budget that they're trading in. And you guys know who I'm talking about. I love you guys. I really, I love when I see that. I get giddy when I see another $150 day, another $150 day another $80 losing day. 
Because guess what? At any time, when the time is right, you can torque that up so easily. And now with the micros, you don't have to torque it up. You can torque it up gradually. Do you know how massive it is and how difficult it is with all those bullshit charts that have been going around in futures for the last 20, 25 years about you grew your account value by this much so you can add one more full S&P contract where you're absolutely doubling your entire risk? You're going from $50 a point to $100 a point? How about going from $5 a point to $15 a point when you're ready? Because a lot of people can't even handle the emotional aspect of it, let alone whether they know that they're just playing the same game. They know that it's the same level. They know that nothing is different. Okay, so that's that. Um, All right, so it didn't sound like there's any other questions. All right, let me uh, let me let you know, especially those of you that might have been on trial for a little little bit longer, because this is going to be literally the only time I do this, and I've decided I'm going to do it once per year. So if you're interested in being a member of this group, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. By the way, there is a Decent amount of time here in the room where I don't do anything and I sing and we don't trade that often and talk about 80s music and generally enjoy ourselves. So that is an aspect of it. All right. So here is the pricing page. So to be a member of TDG for this particular special, it's only annual or lifetime. Trading takes a little while. The access to the tr trading room every single day, plus the indicators, plus lifetime access to Discord, you can get that as an annual member. <coughs> Normally $1,500 today using this code Black Friday 50 you're going to take off 50%. And if you do this today, I'm also going to add an entire additional month. So basically right around the end of November, you will be a member all the way through the end of 2023, through January 1 of 2023. So you get an extra month. You get 50% off. It works out to be some ridiculous amount of money, like $3.40 per trading session. And I am here for at least 200, uh, for 200 trading sessions. You're also going to get access to Discord, which I didn't talk about today. We have a Discord, a uh, members-only Discord channel where members help members a lot more than me now, which is great, where you can also see people's progress. And and our our Discord channel is, um, is members-only for a reason. There's nothing wrong with free Telegram or free Discord. You know, a lot of people do these free Discord, but then it's more of an open forum where you don't really know necessarily who to trust or if they put in the time. Our Discord channel is only for members. And if you're an annual member, you will get access to Discord forever. So you can stay in the community and stay in touch, even if a year and uh, 13 months from now, you decide you've learned everything you possibly can and don't have time, don't want to be in a room again. So here's our here's our Discord, uh, Discord channel, and it's got lots of good stuff in it, okay? Plus you get the indicators um, that I have including the extreme turn. Now, a lot of these indicators are free. You can get these for free, but if you want the extreme turn and a couple others, you're going to get those for Ninja Trader or Trading View. That I don't have indicators for Trade of Eight. Okay. So that's it on that. If you want to, let me put this in here. Black Friday. 50. Now, those of you that, uh, well, look, this is not a hard kind of sell thing. Um, the other thing it will include is, is, uh, is, uh, have two courses that will be coming out one on options and one on full details about a lot of what we went through today, but mostly techniques and strategies. 
for getting through the prop programs, approaching them correctly, having a realistic expectation of them, all those kinds of things. There's a lot of great Black Friday deals going on right now uh, in all these prop programs. I know there's a lot that you know I hear all the time. Well, I don't quite have the money for it yet, but I do seem to have the money to uh, reset my Apex account five times. Okay, please stop that madness. Don't do that. You don't have to join this group today, but I've what I'm doing. What I'm tr really looking to do is make this as accessible as it possibly can. And if you're committed to making this the last investment you ever make in a trading education product, I'm committed to helping as many people as I can at these crazy price points. There really is nothing like this for a trade room and for essentially daily access to me. You know, there are many members who've expressed concerns about continuing to add members because for a lot of reasons, I get it. And I've already told you, some people have experienced that, you know, I can't answer as many DMs as I used to and all these kinds of things. That's not a bad thing because I think it more than makes up for community members helping other community members because you guys are in a different spot than me. And I think your input and advice is uh, equally, if not more helpful. So what I'm getting at is that this will stop at some point, at any price point. I don't know if it's next year, but it's probably going to get close to next year. And I would like to have a core group of three to 500. Maybe we'll get a little more than that. We're at 180 right now. So there's not, and I don't need to keep this going forever. And I'm selling lifetime licenses because I just want you to do it once and be done with it. This is the annual. So if you want the lifetime, the lifetime is something i've never done which is black friday 60 it's going to take it down to a thousand bucks and you're done forever and this code will only work for someone that uses it today that was in this live session so you'll get rewarded this code won't work for the replay so if you're watching this on replay it's going to be down to 50 it's still good so black friday 7 uh, 60 okay black friday 60 thousand bucks and you're here for as long as it takes, for as long as I'm here. And uh, I just had a very uh, low calcium score and I did a stress test where I kicked ass. So apparently my ticker's in decent shape. I did get a little lightheaded while playing squash about a month and a half ago and it freaked me out. Um, but we keep our emotional capital scores really low. And look, if, if the room closed down in early part of next year, I would want everyone to feel like they got tremendous value from just what they saw in just a month's worth of of trade rooms plus you're going to get access to every single recording there's more stuff in here in discord there are more sessions in here than you could ever watch so i don't want this to be overwhelmed right you want to walk forward but there's more sessions than you could ever watch i um, really appreciate the members that go in and highlight little clips of the session sometimes and what I've started to do now is post uh, this every day too. So you see, this is only during the session. I'm not cheating on you. This is what I'm doing. Like this might bore the crap out of some people. There's 71, 243, $92, 104, 121, and 56 bucks. Okay. All right, so yes, Jerry, it includes all the indicators you need, but the indicators are not the, the big selling point on this because <clears throat> everything that I showed today, you could do for free on Ninja or TradingView or TradeAbate. So I don't want you to, I'm not in the business of selling indicators. The, the one that has a lot of value is this one called the extreme turn. Um, many, uh, this one right here. So the answer is yes, but you're not buying indicators. You're 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 buying a you're buying a a lifetime access to a university where you're going to come to class as often as you can come to class. And if you can't come to class, you're going to watch the replays and you're going to learn this stuff. The indicators themselves won't. Yes, it's this is for Ninja as well. Correct. You get this extreme turn for Ninja as well. This is an experiential thing, right? 
now's the time where i just i just ask a little bit if there's any members that want to chime in or say anything about their experience or if someone wants to ask a question of a member um i can't i can't say that everyone's experience is you know phenomenal but i i believe that most people are are experiencing something they might not have in other things they've tried in the past so jerry I answered that does this include the indicators Speaking of last investment, anyone, any special to go from annual to lifetime? Yes. So green, great question. So green trades um, or anybody that is on annual, um, just send me an email. I'll give you a coupon. I, I mean, I'll even tell you it's, it's going to be 300 bucks. So you can up and I know I, I hate I, I get it. I know some of you upgraded at a higher price. That's just how sales work. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm sorry. But if you if you're a member, <coughs> Send me a thing and I'll give you something that will cost you 300 bucks and you can upgrade and you'll be done forever. So it'll get kind of close to the price that you can do today. Okay, so just send me send me that. Send me an email though, uh, info at Traders Dev Group. Um, yeah, if it's not clear, you go to the pricing page right here. So I'll put it in here again, the pricing page, choose whichever you one you want and it's Black Friday 50 or Black Friday 60. Black Friday 50 or Black Friday 60. All right, I think that was it. Oh. All right, there you go. Yeah, thank you. Checks in the mail to Ray. I appreciate that. There's another Ray from one Ray, from one Ray to another Ray. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. That's really important to point out. This is not a what position, you know, it, you, you might be hard pressed for a while to even have any idea what positions I'm in and what I'm doing for a while. And that's, that's fine. But what you need to be able to do is know what is the ATR? What does the volatility look like? What does the volatility environment look like? Where are we trading relative to the prior session? What's your risk budget? What's your best day? What's the 60% off for? That's for, for a lifetime. So annual, you get 13 months today for 50% off. 13 months from today, you get an extra month. So you remember all the way through. Plus on annual now, see, this doesn't say that it includes the software and all this stuff, but it does. If you're here for this, this, this uh, special, you'll get, the so you'll get everything that you get in, in lifetime except just a shorter period in the room. Okay, let's do this. So you got it. So Black Friday 60, let me just show you over here. I think I already did, but I'll do it again. Yeah, right here. You put in Black Friday 60, it takes it down to that price right there. Okay. Yeah, you can, yeah, PayPal is accepted. Yep. Take PayPal, take whatever. Can't pay in crypto anymore. Thank you, Adam. So you can read some of the little testimonials. Uh, I do have a testimonial page up here too, which is down here on um, reviews. So these are... And I always say this, like if you're if you've been a member for a while and and you feel like you're ready and you want to leave a review, it really does help. Awesome. Thank you. So. And then we have, you know, we have some some stars and I know that some of the stars sometimes feel they feel hesitant to put their numbers up and I've told them, no, please do, you know. Um, so, you know, we, we've had some people do some pretty amazing things on just a, you know, pure P and L basis. So link to the help document for installing the ATR X, uh, 
so Ron, um, what you want to do for that is go over here to the help library. I'll grab it for you for right now, but this is the article right here. But no, you can go to that help library and, and do it yourself as well. Yeah, let's put, put some gifts and cool stuff in there. We like that. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, non-member Ray, if you want to, if you want to continue on, you know, it's ten days for ten dollars to be in the trade room. You won't see prices like this again until next year. But yeah, I'm not doing a second session today for the Fed minutes. But we do have Fed minutes. Thanks for reminding me. So if anything was going to move the market out of its uh, low range today, it could certainly be the Fed minutes that are coming out at two p.m. Eastern. So just know that that's going on. Yeah, it's called a workspace. Sorry, yeah. You're going to import a workspace. Essentially, just take the file and you put it in the workspace folder under uh, Documents NinjaTrader 8. All right, I think I got all the questions. Hopefully, we see some new members uh, over this course of this weekend. I'll send up. I'll send out some reminders. But again, the the Black Friday 60 is only going to work for uh, for today. So if you are able to take action on that awesome and you can be a lifetime member for a very reasonable investment i know that oh in terms of the the uh, prop stuff we also not always but occasionally we'll get you know a little bit better not necessarily deals but there's a couple owners of some of the prop programs that are in our community channel so they can interact they uh, in our discord channel they can interact with you there if you want to know about the latest things that are going on in the prop world in terms of discounts i always appreciate if you can use my codes obviously I get compensated for that but you know follow the the channel there uh, thanks keep uploading some of your your numbers and stuff that's just fantastic Again, what I do is meaningless. It's it's what uh, no, there's you can't do the uh, no. The installment plans haven't changed, so that installment plan is very expensive now. So it's one time one time payment only. Um, I know that monthly an installment is helpful for a lot of people. I I, I get it, but um, you know, hopefully you're in a situation where you can just put it on a credit card. Um, and actually, if you're in a situation where you don't have that amount on a credit card or it puts you in any kind of stress, it's it's better just not to do it, in my opinion. Um, I have enough data now that almost all the installment plans uh, like don't get completed, which is which I think is terrible because what happens is people end up paying more money and then they they don't they don't finish and then I can't you know I've I've done about. Uh, I've done way too many like one-off deals to keep to help people out and I want to help people out but I'd rather just help you out by giving you a one-time really 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 reasonable reasonable investment so is the discord site free no the discord site is not free the only way you can get to discord is you have to be a member so if you do do a monthly plan you get access to discord for as long as you're a member but when you cancel you're removed from discord you're removed from the from the uh, from the indicators and things. All right. Um, so we we answered. I think any other questions on what this Black Friday thing is? Asked about the second session. We're not doing that. Everyone have a great uh, Thanksgiving if you celebrate that. If you're in another part of the world, enjoy the time off. Um, everyone does your own thing we're all adults here but i would highly recommend that you you not trade on friday so you don't have to worry about what the trading hours are and all those kinds of things um on the on the uh discounts right now bolinox is running a 70 percent off sale with tdg thanks 70. apex is running a 80 percent off forever with tdg 80 80. uh take profit is running 50 percent off um with the code uh tdg i don't know what the code is on this i didn't even put the code in here it's not good i think it's tdg barstool 
and they all have subtle differences but if you want to get paid faster then take profit as one to consider but they all have subtle differences yeah so basically apex right now is 80 percent off for life i mean that's just bonkers so that's like 35 dollars for a for the fifty thousand dollar account and yet I've already seen, I swear, it just, I just, it boggles my mind. I don't, I don't understand it in the slightest. People don't even understand how their billing system works. This week, there have been people that have bought some for $35 and then reset them. If you're going to be a bozo, at least be a bozo who understands what you can do during the promotional period. Just cancel it and buy a new one. But the emotional capital, the damage that you're doing by ever resetting even once. Now, let's be honest. You're going to have a couple of resets probably in the course of your trading career. But you make this investment with me and you spend the time to come in here. I mean, you'll know when you're being a bad boy or girl and you're just not doing any of it correct. You fell off the wagon and you reset and stuff. But there's been a bunch of members that had to eventually kind of maybe learn the hard way where I literally just call them out. I go, what the heck is going on with your evaluation right now? How in the world are you in a lockout when, you know, you were in here in the trading room for the last 15 days where, you know, no sweat, everybody made money and you're doing something completely different. You can do something completely different as long as you're making progress and managing risk. I don't care what you do, but if 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 you're losing, that's not going to work. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanks for everyone who stuck around. Uh, again, the quick recap: you can use this uh, this password World Cup to get in back into this room on. For, from today until this weekend, basically, you can uh, watch the replay of this. I'll send out this replay as well, but there's an archive of nine other sessions. And then you can also spend a little bit more time in this room drive and click on each of those and download some more stuff in there. There's PDFs. Yeah. No, I think that, you know, I, I lead with this that it's a trade room and it's an educational thing, but but I've often also said that I want, by the way, I see a bunch of orders coming through. Welcome everybody who's, I won't, I don't do that whole call you out, but if you want to say that you just joined and put that in there, that'd be fantastic. <clears throat> um, yeah, this Discord gang is, it's a useful environment. And, and let me just go over a couple of the channels here. So we have a Q&A, a general channel. We have random where we just put in fun stuff or whatever. We have our PTR, which is the pro trade room where I post all the replays. Again, thank you so much to members that will actually slice those up into little bite-sized things from occasion. We have our most popular channel, which is our futures channel. Um, so here's an example. So I have no issue with that because Lane is a star when it comes to risk management. Okay. This is not my thing other than I love that there's a volume histogram over here. You know, and when I say not my thing, I, I can't stand trend lines, but that's fine. There's so many ways to make and lose money. The most important thing is that Lane has become a superstar risk manager in terms of embracing the concept of, of staying small. So this is important too. You don't have to feel like you can't share other stuff that's working for you or other charts or other things. In fact, you know, but then, you know, anyone else shorting the cues at the T line here, right? It's helpful if we have these common terminologies and ways that we can orient ourselves, right? So here's our futures channel. We have an options channel. We have a channel crypto, which has gone dead where, you know, you can, Watch all this fun stuff. I've been very vocal, you know, I mean, I went from hero to zero to zero to zero on crypto, like a lot of people. Um, but 
all my crypto losses are from a uh, equity in a exchange, not from crypto itself. Uh, we have trading view, by the way, they're running a big black Friday sale, a ninja trader, uh, channel. Um, we have a prop catch all channel. Then we have prop broken out for Lilo. You profit earn a trade apex elite Bullinox, take profit trade day. We have this great area, which I wish more people would post in, but here's some weekly results. Lots of good stuff. The option stuff will start, it's options on futures. It will be options on futures for micros only, MES and MNQ. We eventually would get into some ZN, uh, uh, ZN options potentially as well. And that's gonna start in early next year. But You'll only get, I, um, as of now, I won't be selling the course or offering anything separately. So you'll have to be a member. So it'll be included when you're a member. And then for uh, some people, I'll fund you as well. So I'll, I'm going to fund you with my own money. But it's going to be the TDG way. No, we don't trade any minis in here. Some members do trade minis. Um, we trade minis on the treasury markets, if you will. So ZN, ZB, ZF, ZT, but no minis. Uh, the minimum that you that that you should have to trade a mini like an S&P is 20,000 cash, maybe 25. So if you have a $50,000 account, you could trade two e-minis. And if you have a $50,000 eval account from a prop firm, you don't have a $50,000 account. You have a $2,500 account. And you don't even have a $2,500 account. You have a $250 account because that's your daily risk loss that you should be taking on those accounts. And you see if you or start to orient yourself that way, how it really starts to make more sense. This bullshit about a 1% to 2% risk per trade, that's nonsense. That works fine if you have $25,000 capitalization per mini you can take one to two percent risk of that and be trading that the volatility for that instrument properly but if you have a twenty five hundred dollar account live or twenty five hundred dollars worth of drawdown risk which is a hundred percent of your account value how in the fuck can you take two percent risk on a twenty five hundred dollar account the answer is you can't so what you're doing is you're signing a risk budget we started the whole session with this concept of the risk budget you're doing it that way so anyway Great question, no minis. But everything we do could apply to a mini, you know, but before you get to a mini, you'd be trading three micros, then five micros. Lots of people get hung up on the commissions associated with micros and don't see the power of what they allow you to do. It's a completely different trading style. You can manage risk a lot better. They're much more than just smaller and more expensive. They're more expensive on a transactional basis. But um, I was just, uh, the other day, I, I ran into um, a friend of a friend that uh, I hadn't seen him in forever. And this guy's a pretty decent sized trader. He's actually a friend of John, another friend of ours who I've mentioned before. But anyway, we're all um, hanging out at, at Lifetime Fitness in, in Vegas. And uh, got to talking and dude is trading mes a hundred mes why would you do that well because it provides him all this additional flexibility isn't that crazy versus a hundred a hundred ms versus a hundred mes versus 10 es well that makes no sense to me it would seem like 10 es but the more he ex explained it, I got what he was getting at because he's a pro, like all pros campaign around price, what I talked about before. All pros. When you hear about this all in, all out stuff with some and they say they're a pro, they're they're a pro, but they're they're definitely not, they might, they're not optimizing their their profits. Now, when you're starting out, you need to be much more limited in that regard. Okay. Um there you go. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Welcome to everyone who joined. I answered the start with options. Yeah, you, you heard me bad mouth fibs and trend lines and everything else. I just get a little feisty. Obviously, there's lots of ways to make and 
Yeah, I love that. I'm going to read what Twisted wrote. If you're interested in becoming a trader, that's right. Not not how to trade or screw around or trader. A trader is synonymous with risk manager. If you're interested in learning how to manage risk and be a trader, right? Day trading for for income and growing from there. There are no short there are no shortcuts. There are not. You you not only the no shortcuts like I said before, um, so I'm a partner in a company called Collective Two. I've been able to see hundreds of thousands of trading strategies, which is basically just traders. Some of them are algorithmic, but most of them are just discretionary point and click. And I can see the fear and apprehension and tension in their trading because they do okay with small size. They get more uh, subscribers to their strategy, more eyeballs on what they're doing. They feel this sort of performance pressure. And the moment they get out of their comfort zone in terms of size, each tick value is too big relative to their account, relative to how many people they now have invested in them. And they blow up. Now, many of you have probably found a way to blow up just by starting with too small a size. Excuse me, too big a size. It's a, it's a, it's a progression. Uh, with the program, is there a set structured course for me to follow? Um, no, there is no set structured course. There is the Futures Fanatic Foundation course, which is free. And then there is a decent amount of, of training and education videos, but they're not really in a structured format. The, the expectation here is that you come in and watch the replays and spend as much time as possible in a trade room. If you cannot be in the trade room, then I think there's still a lot of value. It's you're in the trade room when you, when you can. Um, but if you cannot actually watch the markets uh, for about the first 90 minutes of the cash session, yes, it's a 23 hour market, but futures trading for what we're doing here is probably not for you. And it's, I just mean for, for you at all, for me or for anything else, or for some course that costs a dollar or $10,000. So this is about, um, about the, the foundation is this, but you can watch all the replays again in discord. But, but again, if your work life and stuff does not allow you to at least a couple times a week practice and see what markets do around the open in the futures markets, then, um, I wouldn't make any investment in futures education because you just don't have the, the time uh, required. Yeah. Okay. Um, speaking of elite trader funding, there is going to be an elite trader funding Black Friday sale. And it starts on Friday. So I'll be doing a YouTube post. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, if you're here, you're on the list. I'll also send out an email. But there'll be basically Black Friday sales from essentially everybody. So on the on the prop stuff. So and also uh, uh, Flowbots is running a 35% off sale starting on Friday. So there'll be 35% off. Uh, Apex has theirs out already. Uh, Bullinox has theirs out already. Uh, Earned a Trade just announced one. Um, the uh, the ETF one will be. I believe only on Friday. So literally on Friday. So I'll get that code out. It's going to be the same thing, 65% off. Plus they're going to do a flash sale for four hours at a time on Friday and try this thing where you can buy the 150 and 250 for like 50 bucks or something. Um, uh, Elite Trader Funding is the place to go if you like Trade of Eight for right now. And Apex is the place to go if you like uh, if you like Ninja. And then there's some subtleties. If you're the type that feels that a fast you're you're of the skill set where a faster payout is important, then I'd look at take profit because you literally can get your payouts and take profit as soon as you earn them. Uh, so Josh is yeah. This I get this question all the time. Why why if there's there's still looks like there's still maybe 50 members here. Can maybe member answer that question? You know, what do you guys think? I get asked it all the time, but I'm in an, another level. So right now it depends on platform. You know, you, you're limited, but I think it, eventually all these firms will support TradingView, Tradeabate, Ninja, and other rhythmic platforms and other CQG platforms. Looks like I just got a fill. 
what did we just get a fill on? We left an order out there. All right, look at that. Order submitted. So we're gonna make that riskless because <laughs> I didn't mean to, order but fell. all right, we're stopped out. Let me just cancel any, any orders, but see that was a minus one buy right down there. So we're getting some movement in the markets. They've given up a lot of the gains as we've been talking here, as we're getting close to closer to the, uh, the Fed minutes. So let me just come over here and make sure that I don't have any uh, working orders. canceled all right so no it sounds like no one answered the question um there we go so adam's answering it yeah there's there's a lot of nuance um the ones on the screen here are all reputable and I know there was some discussions this morning about stuff that Tick Tick was posting or what have you, but overall, gang, um, any of those, you're if you succeed, I mean, they will. No one's going to run away with your money. So then it's just differences of platforms and funded trader rules and payout periods and all these other kinds of things. But for right now, if you're looking for bare bones cost, all things considered, if you can use Ninja, Apex at 80% off for life is pretty crazy. Bullnox is right behind it at 70% off for life. Uh, the Elite Trader funding deal will be 65% off for life. Uh, is trading view necessary if my prop plot fund was Ninja or Trade of it's not necessary. It's just that TradingView integrates with TradeOvate. Um, so if you like to chart on NinjaTrader, excuse me, on Trade of TradingView, and you know a couple of my indicators are on TradingView, and my charting for non-Ninja stuff is on TradingView, my stuff is. But there, we have plenty of members that have built that out on their own on TradeOvate. So no, TradingView is not necessary. It's just integrated. So. Yeah, and TradingView is having a, a big Black Friday sale as well. <clears throat> you can use interactive brokers data to run NinjaTrader in Canada, I think. If you're talking about live, that's correct. So, so um, Canada is limited to some of their futures uh, trading live brokers, but interactive brokers does support Canada, and you can use the API from NinjaTrader to interactive brokers. But if you're in Canada, you can trade any of the prop programs. The prop programs can fund everybody in Canada, which is a great advantage. I mean, there's a guy named Chris who goes by the Canadian Futures Trader who promotes um, uh, a lot of these programs as well and has had a lot of success personally with them. He's in Canada. His, his site's called Canadian Futures Trader. You can chart on any platform and just run domes off the... Yeah, you can... You can do any any combination of things that you want. You can you can chart and execute on something else. It's it, we used to call that swivel chair integration, right? So, um, and the other thing is with uh, so let me let me show you. It's a good example, just real quick. So um, the minus twos came down here. So we know minus two on the Dow Jones is thirty four oh sixty eight, right? So it's thirty four oh sixty eight. What I can do is I know that level and over here on trade of trade of eight 34068 right it's basically the lows that we just hit right there that's minus twos or i could just sell low buy low of day like right here and then here's how i would okay so there's an example again this is not a room in any way shape or form that's around follow me it doesn't matter but you need to know the level 34.068 is minus twos. That's a that's a buy. It can be a buy. It's a level. It's the bottom of the bid zone. You know whether it's a buy for you. We've went through all this stuff. It's low volatility day. It's a Wednesday. It's before. Maybe this is a time you don't even trade anymore. But we'll enter at 30 at 34.068, uh, 
And then another one just above the low of day. You can buy low of day as well. If you are if you are managed to short or buy in the top five percent of the range, no guarantee that you make money, but those are easier positions to manage if you're looking for just little uh, counter trend scalps. Some days don't work. Someday every new low or every new high is made by an, followed by another new low or new high shortly thereafter. But there, so that's an example of how you can just chart on something else and just go ahead and enter in. I don't even have a chart on trade of eight. I never open up trade of eight charts. Nothing wrong with them. I just don't use them. Yeah, the bracket orders are nice. I like that they they have the join bid and sell join ask buttons. By the way, if you're um, if you want to save hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of your trading career and better executions and just offer liquidity to the markets, which means never, ever, ever hit the market button, like ever. The only time you hit the market is if you're exiting at market and canceling, closing out a position, or, you know, in some instances where you want to, you know, not never, ever, ever. But for, for most day trading, if you have a if you have a level, you use the limit orders, or if you're looking to get in right around price, just join the bid if you want to go long or join the ask if you want to go short. Yes, one out of 15 times you'll miss that fill. Maybe one out of 15. But for all the price improvement that you get, it's well worth it. So make sure you have the join bid, join ask buttons on your domes, on your charts, everywhere. Join bid, join ask. Okay. Let me let me just show it to you over here on. Uh, if I'm looking to get long right in here, I'm going to buy the bid. Orders, order, fill. Okay, I got to fill. That was probably a one tick price improvement over market. Okay. If I want to do another one, I'll just buy the bid again. See, the bid is 79 by 81. Buy the bid again. Orders, order, fill. And I got filled again. We can do this all day. Now I'm going to sell the ask. Order. Look at this. I'm like a genius. I'll sell the ask again. Order submitted. Order canceled. Now I want to buy the Order, bid. Order filled. By the way, this is just for educational purposes, right? I'm just showing you the way to enter around. Just don't use the market orders. Yeah, use you want to use limit 99 out of 100. But if you're if you're looking for All right, Isaac had a trade of a G1, so he said he has a big G day, which is great. So his profit has exceeded his risk budget, which is fantastic. All right, we've gone for a long time. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate it. Order, Bill. Stay green. Trade like you mean it. Trade like you mean it. 13 months. Live trade room. All the goodies for 750 bucks. Back Friday, fitty. Be good, everybody. Have a great uh, Thanksgiving. Rooms closed on uh, Friday. We'll see you, see you all back here on Monday. And welcome to all the new members. I'll send you out a little uh, welcome email as well once I go through everything. Be good. Bye-bye.